Yes, so the first big story is that this election is the most competitive since the Fourth Republic, 1999. That election was the one after the military government handed over the one Obasanjo won in 1999. This is the first time we're seeing three strong parties. In the second election that brought in, uh, uh, what do you call it, Obasanjo, his second election, there was an attempt by Malam Nuhuribadu, but he didn't do that well. So this is a genuine three-horse race. Mm -hmm. Partly because the three candidates represent the three main geopolitical zones, but there are lots of complexities in it. So it's a competitive election. So let's look at the geopolitical areas. In Ghana, of course, we have the north and the south, but Nigeria doesn't. How is Nigeria subdivided for us to be even looking at elections based on... Ni Nigeria on is a regions. very complicated geopolitical area. There are six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. And so there are 36 states. So we have 16, there are 36 states. These 36 states are split into northwest with seven, northeast with six, north central with seven, southwest with six, southeast with five, and then south south with six. Now, the easiest way to do this is to say... The three main ethnic groups in Nigeria, there are over 300. Southwest is dominated by Yorubas, so that's Southwest. Southeast is dominated by the Igbo, but there's also the South-South, Delta, Bielsa, and all of that. But you can consider all that Southeast. Then the North has two broad divisions, Northwest, Sokoto, Kebi, Zamfara, Katsina. This is the Northwestern part. Buhari is from south and uh, Northwest. Then, of course, Northeast which has Yobe, Borno State, Adamawa, of course. So the, the Hausa Fulani group are predominant in the north, Yorubes are predominant in the southwest, and the Ibos are predominant in the southeast. But that's very simplistic. So the Nigerian election, you typically have the six ...3.5 million voters. Mm -hmm. So you can take a calculator out. The northwest has 22... Point three million voters. Northwest. Yes. So this is Sokoto, Kebi, Zamfara, Katina, Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa. Mm -hmm. They have 22.5 million voters. Mm -hmm. The Northeast, Borno, Capital Medugri, Yobe, Gombe, Adamawa, which is where uh, Atiku is from. Adamawa is not... Order. Bauchi, Taraba, 12.5 million. So Northeast is probably half of the population of Northwest. Because it includes places like Niger State, which is effectively a northern mm -hmm. state. Kwara State is a Yoruba dominated state, but 50% Muslim, 50% Christian. Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Kogi State, with Lokocha, where the rivers meet in the middle. Then you have Benue State and, and, and Plateau State, which are predominantly Christian. All right? And so then you have so Nasarawa. So my point is that North Central is a mixed bag of north and south mixed together. together. Then, then you have, have how many? There are seven states, Niger, Kwara. No, I mean population. The what population of 15.4 million. 15, 15. Okay. 4 million. Okay. Then you have the southwest, which has 18 million voters. Southwest has, of course, Lagos. Lagos alone has 7 million. Right? So Lagos are about 7 out of 18. That's about three-fifths yeah. of the overall southwest is Lagos. But there's also Oshun. You have uh, 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 Oyo, Ekiti State, Ogun State, and... Uh, Lagos State. That's Yoruba land. Yes, okay. 18 million. Okay. Then you have the southeast. The southeast have the five Igbo states, if you want. Enugu. And if you read your things fall apart, mm -hmm. you know a bit about yeah. Enugu. Yeah. Enugu the, 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 state capital is Enugu. And then there's Anambra state, Onisha. So the fictional Biafra. Yes, Imo, uh, Iboni, Aba, Abia states. These five states together call the southeast. 10.9 million voters. So that's our 11 million voters. Okay. Right? And the South South. And the South South is now where Jonathan Goodluck is from. So that's Adam Soshimoli and all those guys. So this is Edo State, Delta State, Bielsa State, State, River State, Akwaibom Cross River, Port Harcourt. These 14.4 million. So if you put Southeast and Southwest together, about 25 million, right? So again, so you have Northwest, 22.3 million registered voters, Northeast, 1.5 million voters, North Central, 15.4. Southwest 18 million, Southeast 11 million, South South 14.5 million. So if you put together the votes of 
north, central, northwest, and northeast. If you win that, chances are that you are going to go with it. That's why it's generally been looking like that's where the, the vote so basket usually, is. So that's the problem. Nigeria is not, it's not like Ghana. In, in Ghana, the first pass the post wins. Nigeria is a bit like the U.S. So in Nigeria, because of ethnic allegiance, you don't only have to win the popular vote. If, if I don't need to win the popular vote, you need to have a good spread between all the six geopolitical zones. So you could get the popular vote and not win the election because they need you to not just win in your base. Because the first major election in Nigeria was run on the basis of where you are from. And I don't know if you have that map, where in that case you have Obafemi Awolo mm -hmm. from the southwest, mm -hmm. you had Namdi Azikiwe from the east, from the um, east, eastern part of Nigeria, or yeah, the and south then Tafawa Balewa. Alaji, uh, say Abubaka Tafawa Balewa from the north. Mm. He won that election, and the second election he won as well. That was the beginning of the fault lines where voting was based. And indeed, Nigeria has too many ethnic groups to just use the three. But you can see how the dominant groups are represented by the lead figures. And in fact, this election is very similar to the first one, where you have a northerner in the person and then you have a southeastern in the person of Peter Obi. So this is actually a replay. This traditional... So, and it's almost like every 30 years it happens. So you have a replay of... In fact, the election that was ostensibly won by... Uh, what do you call his name? The, the, the 93 election. The guy who never became, Moshida Viola. Yeah. It was very similar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Now, so in a general sense, the southwest has always been the, the swing area because the southeast is Igbo dominated and they are mostly Christians. All right? Uh, Hausa Fulani, strongly Muslim. The southwest is is mixed because you have states like Kwara State where there are a lot of Muslims, where you have states like Ogun State where there are a lot of Christians, you have states like Lagos which is cosmopolitan, Oshun State, a lot of Christians, traditional worshippers. So usually if you look at the electoral map of Nigeria, sometimes where the southwest goes, so which is why Obasanjo was a successful uh, candidate because it was in the southwest. I think that the major mistrust in Nigeria, again from an outside perspective, is between the southeast and the north. So for the first time in, so for, for like this election is very similar to the first election where you have the three main geopolitical zones with genuine contenders. It's a three-way election. And even as the results come, you would see how that pans out. Let me bring in Sky. I'll come back so that we talk about that, um, the Biafra issue. Could it be the reason that the Igbos have been sidelined? It's almost like there's a pledge or a give the power to the East. Um, Sky, mm -hmm. this gentleman who is fed on the rankings. People think that he may well become the guy who will lead this election into a runoff if he doesn't end up winning. Mm -hmm. In fact, prior to the election, there was a view that uh, Peter Obi was just a social media mm -hmm. creation. But it appears he may be doing well, way better than he, he has been projected to, to do. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's largely because of the, um, the, the hope that he appears to offer to the younger uh, population of, of Nigerians. And uh, basically, people have been dismissive of his uh, you know, participation in the race. Able to actually destabilize the seeming duopoly, if you like, mm -hmm. within Nigerian's polity, Nigeria's polity. But it would seem that the results that we have received thus far uh, would indicate that he is doing fairly well if you were to buy the narrative of folks who had said that he was not going to do anything. Um, and we should also not forget that in terms of following, people have been very critical of the older generation, that Nigeria is where it is today because of the lack of, um, you know, thorough performance on the part of folks who had hitherto been in charge of the affairs of Nigeria. I mean, the current president, he was a former head of state. You know, the Honorable, uh, the, the, His Excellency uh, Obasanjo, previously a former head of state, came to rule Nigeria. Atiku himself, a former vice president. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at... Uh, if you look at it contextually, there is a certain feeling by the majority of Nigerians, who are basically the youth, that there should be a shift in how things are done in that country. And they see Peter Obi, a former you know, um, you know, governor of the Anambra state in, in Nigeria, as the man to provide that leadership. The question is whether he will be disruptive enough 
has to create the right momentum to take this election into the next. We have our own example here, don't we? We saw what Dr. Papa Kwesindum did when he led the CPP in 2008. Mm -hmm. People almost believed that the third force had finally emerged, but when it got to it, we didn't see much. What is working for Peter Obi? Because it appears he has lifted the campaign off social media. Initially, that's what the thinking was, mm -hmm. but most of the youth of the country want him. They simply are tired of the old people because we are told that the old people again run the Nigerian politics. So Tinubu is a godfather. Mm -hmm. Atiku has been there forever. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're talking about, you know, a population of around 200 million people. And 93 million people are supposed to go out there to vote. Of course, if you look at the data, majority of the, the people who form the bulk of Nigeria's population are the youth. And these are people in search of jobs. These are people who cannot put you know, up any longer with the, the problem of electricity. You know, fans that they themselves have gone to put in the banks because government says that they want to change the loads in response to you know, corruption in that country. Again, you also have the problem that they had to, you know, the, the NSAS movement. So many people have died as a result of extrajudicial killings by the police and then also uh, some members of the armed forces in the name of fighting, you know, terrorism. So if you look at the problems facing Nigeria and the youth particularly, there is a certain aspiration that, look, we are doing so well with music. We are doing so well with movies. Our stars are performing well on the international stage, football. How is it that we cannot get the governance of Nigeria right? So we see a certain leadership in this former governor. He will be the person to provide the leadership. And, and that is the message that has gotten you know, a lot of the youth behind him. And he appears to have fed so well. on radio, people on television, and I'm talking about comedians, I'm talking about um, actors or actresses, I'm talking about people who have done something or have achieved something and are, have a lot of influence from, 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 from the Nigerian community. So if you have these people influencing what happens on social media, what happens on television, what happens on radio, you tend to draw a lot of the younger generation with you, and he appears to have tapped into that. The Honorable Ndum did not do that the two times or three times that he ran the elections, and, and it would seem that that may work. That, that, that's what it didn't work for him. Bernard, let me get some of the results that have come through. So, the, in fact, before we even talk about the results, how, how do they do their coalition? In Ghana, on election night, polling stations, results are declared there. Uh, we then fast, it, fast forward it to the constituency level, and then it is brought to the regional office and then the strong room of the EC. That's for the presidential election. Parliamentary is declared at the polling station, continues to the constituency, and is done. How do they do this, Nigerians? So there are 36 states. Each state has a returning officer who is typically a vice chancellor of a university. So the local government area, so if Lagos has 21 local government areas, the local government area results are collated at a state coalition center and then when they are tabulated the returning officer for the state will announce the results so for example yobe state in the northeast the state returning officer is called professor umaru pate very similar to your name so very very so many professors i've, I've yes. observed that's what I, I think in nigeria is a very structured society it's very hierarchical and some of the history will explain why that is the case don't forget the british use indirect rule so for them they work with the structures. Mm -hmm. So for them, hierarchy is very important. Seniority, that's why titles are very key. So and I'll give you an example of this. So Yobe State is in the north, uh, east, northeast. And uh, it's Uma Pita, or Pate, announced Pate. that um, PDP's Atiku Abubakar got 198,000 votes. Um, uh, Bonaf Tribu got 151,000 votes. Peter Obi got 2,506 votes. Expected Rabi, for Peter Obi from that side. And Rabi Ukwan Kwan so got 18,270 votes. So we noticed that in the northern results that are coming, um, uh, what's his name? Atiku Abubakar is winning. But his margins are not as strong as the margins of Buhari in 2019. Give me the figures again. So how well did Atiku... So, 
Mm. The results are actually coming in as I okay. speak to you. So, Yobe State, you have uh, Atiku getting 198,567. Bola Ahmed Tinubu got 151,459. Rabiu Kwan Kwan got 18,270. Rabiu is a former governor of Kano State, very popular in the north. Mm -hmm. He calls himself the Kwan Kwan site. He wears red hats. <laughs> and then Peter Obi got 2,406 votes. Okay. Now, let's compare this to the same Yobe State in 20, 15. 2019. 2019. Okay. The in 2019, uh, Buhari got 497,914. And PDP's Atiku got 50,763. Those are the two main parties in that election in terms of the results for Yobe State. So, Buhari's APC got 497,000 in 2019. In the same state. But that APC number is now 151,000 because Bola Metinubu is from Southwest. He's not an Aousa man. He's not a Fulani man like you. What did PDP get at the time? PDP got 50,763. And now it has moved. And this 50,000 is funny because um, Atiku is from Northeast. Atiku is from Adamawa. Adamawa is just two states away from, from in fact Yobe is bordered on the east by Bono and below Bono is Adama. Adama. So this is supposed to be at the north to Buhari to the extent that he got almost nine times the vote of Atiku. Atiku got fifty thousand in Yobe in twenty nineteen and in fact almost ten times. Uh, uh, Buhari got five, almost 500,000. 2023, today, mm -hmm. uh, Buhari's number for APC, so that's why in Nigeria it's not about the parties, the candidates. The candidate. APC's number has come down from 500,000 to 151,000. And Atiku Abubakar has increased from 50,000 to 198,000. So almost 200,000. So there's a, so two things you can observe there. The, the, the person is more important than the party. The party. But... Tinubu's done well. But have the votes reduced, though? It looks like the votes have reduced so, significantly. Because from 400,000 for just one candidate, the two together for 2023 appears to be around 400,000. Yes, and then you add 18,000 for Abiu Kwan Kwan, okay. so 2,000 for Peter Obi. So that's another 20,000. So it means it was a split then? It means so you, we still so it's almost like 200,000 for Atiku, 150,000 for, um, uh, for Tinubu. Tinubu. So that's 350, plus another 372. So the votes are fewer. Talk to me about Tinubu. He is from the southwest. Bola Metinubu. But he's a Muslim. He's an enigma. The guy, you know, when I speak to my Nigerian friends, they say Bola Metinubu has proved himself. And of all the candidates, he has the most solid track record of governance delivery. In the sense that this is an accountant, fought the military for many years, endangered his life, managed to raise resources to support opposition causes throughout. Was the, was the man who brought the APC together, who brought Buhari in to give, make the APC. Because um, Nigeria is our biggest democracy on the continent, a lot of the things that are happening are of interest not only uh, to Nigerians, that's why we are having a show here covering it for you. Uh, there are lots of observers that are following uh, proceedings there. Indeed, uh, we have the ECOWAS and the AU as well as Commonwealth Observer Mission. Um, that team is done with this work at least up to this time and they are giving a press briefing. Let's just cross over to Nigeria now to hear what their own take of the election has been so far. Incidents of violence, killings, and disruptions were recorded in several states. The mission deplores the unfortunate incidents that occurred in the lead up to the election day, resulting in the loss of life in some parts of the countries. This included the murder of the Labour Party senatorial candidate for the Inugu East Senatorial District, along with five of his supporters, and the three persons who lost their lives in Kano in clashes between supporters of two major rival political parties, the APC and the NNPP. On election day, an attack perpetrated by the Boko Haram insurgents 
in Guazan, local government area in Bornu. State. Thanks to Bolt Business, Felix no longer worries about collecting expense reports. Apologies, uh, we've had to cut into that transmission there. Uh, we're bringing you the live feed. to the media after having covered the election deployed to many of the states and particularly they were discussing the, the issue of Kano where violence re resulted in the death of three persons. Uh, maybe you could even say that the violence that was expected um, did not get to where it was expected to have got into. So Nigeria has done pretty well and it's a tap on the back for that. Even though there were issues with the machines, the biometric machines that were deployed for which reason elections have to be uh, postponed. Even the fact that uh, results are still not out, people, there's apprehension generally. If you look at a lot of the portals, they're talking about apprehension generally among the population uh, because from history, the earliest they've received results was three days after the polls and uh, they seem to be delaying now, and of course, because some of the people would have to vote or had to vote on Sunday. So let me go back uh, or come back in studio. Let me continue with the discussion by the candidate. There are 18 people on the ballot paper. It means if you're not good at selecting, you may end up voting for someone else. But there are top three. Uh, the person who is representing the incumbent party, uh, that's Buhari's party. Buhari is not running anymore. Uh, so P Tinubu is the one who is going to lead his party and has led that party into the election. We have Atiku Abubakar, who has been at almost all elections since we started uh, talking about Nigeria's elections in the, since the return of democracy. Atiku Abubakar is on the, on the ballot, and Peter Obi is also on the ballot. So we're just looking at the candidates themselves. Uh, Richard Scar has already given us brief background on uh, Peter Obi. like pre-independence election where they had someone from the north, one person from the west, that's a Yoruba man, a northern man, and an eastern man, Nandi Azikwe, and all these people coming up. And if you read your, your, your Nigerian history, you remember what happened. Tafawa Balewa emerging the winner. Bola Tinubu, though. Yeah. Uh, As you speak, Lagos State results have just come in. Okay. okay. And uh, quite interesting. Peter Obi of the Labour Party won Lagos State. Are you serious? Yes. Mm -hmm. 582,454, 582,454, followed closely by Bola Metinubu, who was Lagos State Governor for 10 years, the godfather of all subsequent Lagos State Governors, the man who built Lagos. He mm -hmm. says, I, I brought Lagos from a budget of 500 million to 7 billion. Nobody has that record. So the modern Lagos was built by Bola Metinubu. He got 572,606. So he lost by 10,000 votes to uh, uh, Peter Obi. I think Abu Bakar, a distant third, 75,750. Kwan 8,000. Now, the key point here is that in 2019, APC's Buhari won Lagos. He won. So, which, means, which again goes back to the point. Both in 2019, Atiku and Buhari are both northerners. But the APC machine in Lagos delivered Lagos to, to Buhari. Buhari, 500. Uh, Atiku got 448,000 because PDP is also strong in mm -hmm. Lagos. 448,115. So, what, what we've seen is that Atiku. the APC number for Lagos in absolute terms has reduced from 580,000 to 572. It's lost about 10,000 votes. Labour Party did not exist in Lagos in, in that election. four year, years ago. They've jumped from zero to 582,000. So, and Atiku has reduced from 448 to 75,000. Going back to the point, it's not about party, it's about people. But the key issue, the, the, the issue with Lagos is that Lagos is about 7 million voters. Uh, sorry. 8 Lagos, million. 8 million voters. Mm -hmm. No, 7. 7, so, seven South West is 8. Registered voters. Mm -hmm. But let's look at the, the, the people who turn up. Mm -hmm. the, the key point here is that the, the, the Lagos was never going to be easy for Tinubu. So, why? Because Lagos is Accra, cosmopolitan Nigeria. These are where all the woke people live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of the agitation that led to the OB surge came from the NSARS movement, mm -hmm. where the incumbent governments are killed of killing people mm -hmm. in the Lekito Bridge. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect Lagos. So, so Lagos is going to be a battleground state for Bola Tinubu being the former governor and being a Yoruba man, oh, Yoruba man. but also Peter Obi. Of 
it, it is not surprising that they split the vote. It, it is a moral victory for Peter Obi to say, I live in Anambra, I'm a former governor of Anambra, and I've defeated Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in his the so-called builder of Lagos, by 10,000 votes in his own capital city. It's a powerful victory for the Labour Party. I, I don't even even think, if they lose this election. I don't even think it's 10,000. It's 500,000. Because this is the first time he's actually contesting yes. in that. So and you could say that you could say that Tinubu has held all the Buhari votes, right? Because we are at 580,000, Tinubu is 570,000. So essentially, Peter Obi has obliterated the PDP and eaten into the APC with no base, and as in with no governor, no history. with no senator, with no, in the West of Abu Kwan Kwan, with no nothing. nothing. <laughs> to move from zero to 582,000, incredible. That is huge, Sky. So right. the Peter Obi factor. It has moved to the ground and now moved into the ballot box. Yes, you see, as I was explaining, if you look at the numbers, you know, the country, Nigeria, has the largest population of the youth in the world. And we are told that uh, they have a median of 18.1 uh, years, right? Uh, about 70% of the population are under 30, and 42% are under the age of 15. So when you have these numbers, it tells you that there are people who are thinking of new ways of doing things. These are people who are aspirational, who want to achieve the next level. They see all kinds of things on social media. They see all kinds of, of, of things on the television sets. They are seeing how other countries are doing it. They are reading all manner of new books. And they have a Africa will follow because that's the largest you know economy on the continent we are doing the after now if Nigeria provides the right leadership we should expect a certain economic revolution in Africa so the aspiration of the youth is what is the fuel in the in, in the vehicle of the building Bennett yes. the, if you look at Chimamanda and other writers on the Biafra story you get a sense that when they try to succeed the North and the Southwest came together and fought them hard. There's almost like an unwritten rule that let's not make an evil man the president. Why is Tinubu succeeding now? Why is Peter Obi succeeding now? Look, the, 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 again, the, the is it that they've grown out of their ethnicity? No, he's not won the election yet. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> okay. the, and the point is that he was always expected to do well in South East and South, South and Lagos. So this is not surprising, but it is significant. It's not surprising because he's seen as an outsider. He's the youngest of the three, and he actually delivered a surplus when he was governor of Anambra State. Now, the truth is that modern Nigerians are like modern people everywhere. New young people who are cosmopolitan, they claim they have no... They, they, don't, they don't believe they vote on tribal lines. So if a lot of people surrounding Peter Obi in Lagos are not necessarily Igbo people, right? So the younger population may not be as steeped in the ethnic issues as the older folk may be. But the other point too is that the 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 the, the Igbos are seen not just because of the coup d'etats in the you know they are they are more business like so they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. So they for example if you go to Alaba market in Lagos, it's full of Igbos. If you go to Kadu right they move around so they interact with a lot of people in the, so even in Lagos Two days ago, we were talking about people were talking about voter suppression in Igbo-dominated parts of Lagos. So the in their communities, so they are very distinct and very proud. So the the point is that the issue of ethnicity will dominate Nigeria elections for a long time. But when there's a candidate who appeals to the youth, who uses technology and whose base is an urban elite, you will cut across those barriers. Who is relatively young. But whether you have enough... See, the, 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 the framework of the Constitution are very clear in the point about the 25%, which I'll come to later, that if they knew that situations like this would arise, where somebody will come and he will be appealing to just one group, and they didn't want a president to represent just one group. So the president has to work in all the 36 states the federation. and get at least... 25% from some proportion of the country to legitimize their presidency. 
Because one of the biggest disputes in Nigeria has always been about the population census. Because all the major groups have claimed that they have the, more, the, 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 the higher numbers. And in fact, it's believed that the first Nigerian population census figures for all three geopolitical zones was highly inflated. Because everybody wanted to use the census as a basis for mm -hmm. getting a share of the national king. All right? And it didn't help that the oil resources were found in the southeast and the south-south, which is what led to the whole Biafra, where Biafra and the Ogujuku felt that they could exist as a state on their own. So my point is that this should not be surprising to see the levels of numbers he's getting. Whether he has done enough work in the north and other parts of the country to get the threshold required to even push into a runoff is the question we will answer by close of the And so far, the results that have come from the north don't, don't show that he has done that well in the north to merit that. What, 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 will, what he will pray for is, you see, the, the north central will be key to this election, 15.4 million votes. It's first all, all the way from Kwara State all the way down to Benue State. If he gets some good numbers there and does well in the southwest, it could be leading him, but the northeast and the northwest together, about 13 states. He needs to get a showing there. If he doesn't... That's his constituency. So he should win there. I'm talking about the northeast and the northwest. Okay, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't get any significant numbers in those places, he can kiss the presidency goodbye. But I think even if he loses, the, what, what he has done will be written about and will become the playbook for a lot of people who want to see how to develop a third force. Because this is the largest black nation in the world. To have a candidate with no party structures prior to this election, with no governor, with no senator, with essentially young people saying, we want a new guy to go to the capital city and defeat the incumbent party's candidate, candidate who's the former governor. Of that same place. That is absolutely significant. Let's look at the other things that are working against Tinubu. Um, Ola Oshibanjo defeat or removal from the ticket is going to be a problem for the APC general. I spoke to a journalist from Ocean State who said, listen, for me, I thought that Oshibanjo, the vice president, is a guy who should have been given the nod, but they decided to remove him, bully him out of it, and they gave this thing to Tinubu. So, do you think there could be APC people who are aggrieved by that? APC, we can discuss APC for two hours. We won't finish. There's so many, all kinds of things on APC. So, so there's a strong view that the president did not even support Bola Tinubu. Mm -hmm. Because Bola Tinubu actually brought the president into the party, right? And now he wants to run. Mm -hmm. So there's a strong view among people in Nigeria that in the APC, uh, uh, Buhari's candidate was never Tinubu. People even think the cash problem is so, deliberate. So that's point number mm -hmm. one. They feel that Tinubu was not supported by Buhari, that he supported the man you mentioned who himself was brought into the party by Tinubu by himself. Tinubu. All right. So if you look at it, the vice president can call Tinubu his boss. Because most from uh, Babatunde Fashola to the current state governor to all the significant people in Lagos are As people who be. trace themselves to Bola and met Tinubu. Mm -hmm. So that's point number one. Okay. Point number two, he being a Muslim from the south faces a peculiar problem. Because typically the Christians dominate the south, the Muslims dominate the north. So if it's a turn of the south for a candidate, you would accept him to be a Christian. Yeah. He's Muslim. Yeah. But that's not the only problem. He decides that He's choosing I am broad based enough to choose a Muslim from, from the, the north for my running mate because I want to appease the northness. So he goes to Borno State and picks the former governor, Shetima, mm -hmm. as his running mate. Mm -hmm. Christians are like, How are you having a Muslim Muslim ticket? He's like, No, I'm Bola Tinubu. I am from the south. Like, we don't care. You're a Christian. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're not a Christian. Yeah, you're a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, my wife, one of my wives is a, 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 a Pentecostal <laughs> pastor. I said, we don't care. So some of the religious support you've seen, so Peter Obi is riding on a number of waves. Peter Obi is a coalition of many things. Mm -hmm. It's a coalition of young people, of Lagosians, of Southeasterners, and of Christians. Christians. So even though he has, according to Kwan so known nothing, he has many things. The anger of the Southern Christians that when it got to our turn, you took it away. You put, you gave a Muslim, and the Muslim didn't even have the, 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 uh, the, the, the second Republic of Nigeria. There was a man from um, Kogi State, okay, who was a, a Nigerian president. I'll get his name. He was a Christian from the north, okay. I'll get his name for you. So it's not impossible to get a Christian from the north. Uh, but but if the Yakubu go on, okay, okay, Yakubu go on. Yakubu go on was a Christian Gawon. from the north. Again, that was because right. after the coup, which was led by the South Easterners, and then the, the Mutala Mohammed and coup mm -hmm, came, mm -hmm. when they decided to now install a head of, they found a Christian from the north. 
He's from Kogu State. He's a Christian. It's called Yakubu Gons. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. Yakubu yeah, 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 yeah. Gons is a Christian. Okay. So the point is that if you, Bola Tinubu, wants to give your running mid slot to a North, you could find a Christian. You could find a Christian North now. You went for a Borno State former governor. Muslim man. So a lot of that angst against APC has benefited Peter Obi as well. So if it was Oshibanjo who is a pastor, it would have then made sense that he is a flag bearer. Then he appoints a northern Muslim, and then the South's demand for the... So they said that is their turn now. So, for example, the Christian groups from Bishop Oyedepo to Pastor Chris to Paul Enetche and all the big guys who have supported Peter Obi, if it was the former vice president, the current vice president who was on the ticket, that would have been different because he's a pastor in Redeemed Christian Church mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. and he's also from the Southwest. Mm -hmm. So if he had been the candidate... Then the Christian vote would have probably been split, and Peter Obi may not have ridden on the way. So Peter Obi has benefited from many things aside from the fact that he's seen as an outsider. We don't even know whether the current vice president, and since we already are suspecting that uh, Buhari is not even supporting Tinubu, what if the Which vice is why president... Buhari, when he took his vote, he legally then showed his yes. voter card, because yes. now if Tinubu loses, they're going to blame Buhari for it. Mm -hmm. Because governors like the Kaduna State governor are saying, how on earth does an incumbent government decide to change currency two weeks to an election if they don't want the incumbent candidate to lose? Let's go back to Tinubu. So despite all of these things, he's still called the godfather. He's now to become... He's basically saying, reward me. Hey. And you see, the thing about Nigeria is that Nigeria is ruled by strong men. And Bola Ahmed Tinubu is proved his metal if you talk to everybody who knows him for somebody to risk his life under their abacha years to support and finance opposition work and then to build a party pdp was almost like ndc in the sense that when nigeria came back to democratic rule all the guys in government just joined pdp to form a political party so there were all these high level technocrats so from even the current WTO chairperson was a finance minister, mm -hmm. right? A lot of the big wigs in the military government were mm -hmm. simply converted into the PDP. So Bola Ahmed, in all those years, was the one trying to fund the APC C party. With then different names. convinces Buhari, who was then running on a different ticket, to come and join them to bring the Northern base, okay? So we noticed a shift in the PDP's base closer to the southeast now because good, good like Northern is from there. Mm -hmm. And Tinubu holding the southwest for the APC, bringing, uh, uh, what do you call it, Buhari in. So this person, and then you notice that the, the, the progress Lagos has made. Lekki, where Lekki is now, is, was basically C. They, he says, I defeated the ocean. What did they do? They reclaimed yes. land. I was in Nigeria in 2008 for my MBA project. And Lekki was then developing. It was an amazing site. And this is the man who did it. And the other thing he does was that not, he doesn't only lead from the front. So a lot of people say Babatunde Fashola was a very effective governor of Lagos. All of that effectiveness was because of Tinubu's, I want to use the word carefully, patronage. He's the guy who brought him. He found technocrat, put him there. Trouble so though is that people. his opponents claim that he created a business model which enriches him so that any revenue Lagos State gets, the him. claim is that he gets a percentage of it, which is what makes him powerful. Be that as it may, anybody who's lived in Nigeria from the 1980s to today cannot fail to see the economic transformation of Lagos. And the man credited for it is the same guy who has built the APC, using his influence and his, they call him the Ashivaju, his vast resources and networks. Indeed, his message to Nigerians was that I have helped you, so you to help me. Yeah, so yeah. In, in Lagos, people are saying, look, it's time to... the ugly accusations of corruption against him, which go way back to the 80s. Even there are f figures of archives from the U.S. that have not even succeeded in any court of law. But d do you think that that cloud of uh, he being uh, an opportunist, a corrupt man, these are all allegations, by the way, that are hanging over his head, could have... Corruption. And if you take that out of the, the, the architecture of Nigeria, that, that economy will collapse. So you cannot reform Nigeria without leaving an element of corruption in there. Um, the purists will say that no, you have to confront the problem head on and eliminate it. That's why they set up the EFCC, which is supposed to be the, the bulwark fighting corruption in that country. 
Now, if these allegations have any credibility whatsoever, mm -hmm. the expectation will be that that institution will be the authority that will look into them and bring them to a resolution. As we speak, is not being convicted in a court of law. These things remain allegations. And the truth is also that you don't begin, you bec become that big as a businessman in any country without breaking a few rules here and there. I mean, the rich people will tell you there are times that the state itself will put its weight behind you as to make you a giant. We've seen that with, you know, he himself. We've seen that with, um, uh, you know, Dangote. We've seen that with many other rich people. So, Obasanjo. Like, Obasanjo uh, himself, who is uh, one of the biggest, you know, farmers in, in the whole of Nigeria. So, if you look at it from that context, of course, the allegations will always be there. But the question is whether these matters have been resolved properly by a court of law as to determine that this man is not qualified to run for office. The facts support that he's in a race until determined otherwise. I see. Bernard, let's now look at the next candidate, Atiku Abu Bakar, a northerner, a Muslim. He's been there for, and he's actually on the screens now for those who are watching us on TV. Let me also say that we are live on uh, CTFM Radio 97.3, as well as on City TV, broadcasting on Channel 363 on DSTV. For those who are watching us from Nigeria, uh, we, are, we, are, we are saluting you and uh, analyzing your elections for you. And uh, we are grateful that you are joining us uh, from wherever you are joining us. Let's talk about Atikwa Waka Bernard. Ah, Alaji Atiku is a very interesting man, customs officer, um, working the, in, the, in the Nigerian Public Service and was made the running mate to President Obasanjo for the 99 election, vice president for the first two terms. Very wealthy man, um, four wives, over 26 children, a man of means. 70 years. Yeah. Um, he is... And not a political outsider. How many wives? Four. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a political Why outsider. Why are you asking for reiteration of that point? Um, at in this election, Obasanjo endorsed Obi. In the previous election, he endorsed Atiku. Indeed, Obi was Atiku's running mate in the previous election. So the, one of the first insights to know is that Nigerian political elites are not beholden to parties. Personalities are strong. So Obasanjo is strong. Atiku has built such a cult following. But it's always number two to Buhari. Buhari is considered, the, you know, in the elections that, so there are reasons why, uh, what do you call it, Atinubu believes that the, uh, Buhari owes him a lot. Is he brought Buhari into the APC to make it a formidable force to defeat the PDP. Because the PDP had won two elections. I know, as Atiku in fact, have... they had won two elections under Obasanjo, mm -hmm. and they had won an election under Jonathan Goodluck. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and had it not been for Atiku then joining the PDP, then they defeated in 2015 a sitting president, right? Good luck. Good luck, Jonathan. All right. Then from there, the PDP decides, well, let's go for Atiku, who was Obasan just running me to see if he can then help to swing this. So, how uh, Fulani man, why is from Adama, why is from the Northeast? Mm -hmm. Northeast is not as populated as Northwest. It's about half of the Northeast is quite sparsely populated. Adama is not a very big state. So Northeast is 12.5 million, 23 million for yes. Northwest. Yes, and he, he is, but the truth is that in Nigeria, it's about ethnic group personality before party. So our reporters keep telling us that in Nigeria, the Aouza people in the Northeast are whispering to themselves, it's time to vote for our own. In fact, in, in, the, in the most on Friday, some of the sermons in house that I have listened to was that, why do you go elsewhere when your own is in there? Now, the difficulty for this election would be if you're focusing on Muslim, you have two of them. So which one is really yours? Is it the one who is from your backyard who is Muslim? Because in Mos is Muslims believe that every Muslim but, is a no, Muslim. But, but, but you know that even in Ghana, a lot of our Islamic scholarship, we trace it to northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, respected uh, is the Sultan of Sokoto, mm -hmm. all right? Even before the Emir of Kano. Mm -hmm. So what my point is that a Muslim from the north will be accepted el f um, by the, the northern elite before a Muslim from the south. You, you know this. Yes, Osman right? Danfodio started that campaign. E e exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, you would notice that uh, the, the fact that um, uh, Tinubu is a Muslim, if he was the only Muslim on the ticket, then he, makes he may have had the, the northern vote. But if you have 
a man of the stock of Atiku, mm. former vice president from Adamawa State, a full animal on that. There's no way mm. they will choose Tinubu over. Mm. So you are right. So he, but the, pro, the, 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 the key though is that Atiku is not sweeping the north like Buhari did. And so, and that could be because there's a split for the Muslim vote. APC's political machine, if you look at the 19, uh, 2015 results, the 2011 results, the APC has been winning the North very well with Buhari. So there's a system that they, so it, even though the party is not strong, they still have structures. But the name APC itself is a new creation, right? No, but at least Buhari used that for it's two It's always elections. been there, yeah. So Buhari has won the APC on two occasions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to have this political machine in the North, it still delivers. So the numbers we're seeing from the the northern states. I, I want you to look at the map here, Bernard. Yes. I think it will help all of yes. us here. So the the map that we have on the screen, which is giving us a geographical yeah. breakdown of uh, Nigeria, Wonderful. The, the figures that are coming. So, through. so, this so, what you're so the point I'm making is that the biggest voting block is the northwest. Northwest are Sokoto, which is where the N is mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the top on yeah. on top of the N. So where the N is is uh, uh, Zamfara State, all right. Then there's Jigawa State. Then there's Kano State, which is the largest of the north. And there's Kaduna State, which is the most commercialized of the states. Uh, El Rufai's Kaduna, large population in the northwest. This is so. The reason Buhari would win is that Buhari is more pure in in that sense because Buhari is from Katina. It's interesting. That now this man. Mm. Uh, Atiku. Atiku. Atiku is from the red side. Yes, so where the M is? Northeast. He's from Adamawa. Mm -hmm. So Adamawa, Borno, Gombe, Yobe. These are not as largely populated as these places. But so, what I'm saying is that, so it's interesting that the southwest, which is a commercial hub of the country, doesn't have as, many, as much population as the Actually, north. no. So it's funny. So for state, state level, Lagos, Lagos has 7 million. 7 million. Lagos is bigger than even Kano in this election. But here they have oil and all of those. Yes, but there are only six states. So you see, this is the point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. think, think about it. The southwest states are Ogun State, which is next to Lagos, mm -hmm. Oshun State, Okiti State, Ekiti State, Oyo State, and then Lagos. All right? So it's just... One, two, three, four, five. Okay. As compared to Northwest, Katsina, Kaduna, Kano. Sokoto, Kano, Zamfara, Jigawa, six. Kano is massive. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's six states. Okay. If you take Lagos out of this, Lagos is like three fifths of this. Of that, okay. All right. Okay. So Lagos is the most significant state, but Northwest is the most significant block. If you add this 12.5 to the 22, you are almost 35 million of 13 states in the north that 35 million if you are going to use the purely christian vote this is 11 million plus 10 15, 14 million yeah. 25 million you're still another 7 million short north central is a motley crowd of muslim christian animist everything so everybody will get some from there and southwest is where then the issue then becomes yeah. where do yeah. you go yeah. so i feel the north central will be very key in this election if they go in the, some of the states in the in the bottom corner, like Benue State, Jos Plateau, highly Christian states, but if you go further up north, Niger State is the highly Muslim state as well. So it's probably going to balance itself out, and then of course the southwest. So the point I'm making is that uh, for this election, your uh, what's his name, Atiku, Atiku is the northern candidate, but he will not have the advantage Buhari has because of APC and because of Tinubu. So he will not win the North as massively as Buhari won it. Which is why this election, a lot more people may go into a runoff. It, it is interesting. So um, people are interested in the map. They, they would want you to show more. And I don't know if Sky's head is no, bugging I can, it. I can explain. <laughs> I can explain. If so there are three ways of analyzing Nigeria. The, the river Niger the river Benue meet at Lokoja. Lokoja is in Niger State, which is where Federal Capital Territory is. And then the, it comes down to the river. So basically, all the states above the two rivers are northern states. Then the states to the bottom of the Niger River is the southwest, and the states to the bottom of the Benue River is the southeast. Mm -hmm. That's one way of looking at okay. it. 
uh, North Central. Yes, it, it, Lokoja is the meeting point of the two, all right, in the middle here. But that's one way. So the first way of describing Nigeria is that these people here are Yoruba people, the people here are Igbo people, and then they are the Delta states, mm -hmm. and then these are Hausa Fulani people. Hausa Fulani. That's then, way one. And then they all meet in but the But you middle. can divide this into two. This group is where... Commercial Kaduna. A lot of Christians live in Kaduna State, which is why there were disturbances there. So a lot of the Igbo traders from here Moved will there. go everywhere. A lot of them are in Kaduna. And but cool, Kaduna of them. is still dominated by the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So El Rufai is the governor of Kaduna State. Indeed, Peter Obi's running mate, Senator Dati Baba Ahmed, is from Kaduna, is from Kaduna State. He actually has a university which employs about 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. That's a different story. Katina State is where uh, Buhari is Buhari from. Buhari comes from. Even Yaradua. It's also from Katina mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. Then you have Kano State, which is like the spiritual capital of the north. This is where during Eid they do all the horse riding. Yeah, the the Emirates were high. So, for example, um, the richest man in Africa, uh, what's his name? Bangote. He's from Kano State. Right? And the man who was a central bank governor. Yes, the, uh, he was in line to become the uh, the Emir of Kano. Yeah. Uh, uh, I forget his name. He lost to uh, Adobayo. Yeah, his name I, is. I forget his mm, name. Mm. But you have um, Jigawa State. Sokoto, Sokoto, is, Sokoto is actually here. And uh, side point, Sokoto State is where the, um, uh, the Sultan of Sokoto is the most respected. Mm -hmm. uh, so my point is that these people, again, historically, because they had already well-structured traditional systems of governance, the British is not interfere with this. So the Sultan of Sokoto, the Emir of Kano, will still be in place even though the British were ruling. So the Nigerian elite are highly educated, but a lot of the populations here were not that well educated historically. So their elite will find their way into governance and into the army. And you trace this to colonialism. Yes. I mean, it's funny. Kwesi Kwating, the current, um, the guy who was sacked. Yeah, from the British a book on colonial legacies and he describes this very very wonderfully he talks about now policies of britain it was actually nigeria was a business. created the fault lines in places like this yeah, it was a business right? yeah. now so my point is that mm. it's not surprising that buhari had to come to help the apc to win because buhari is a former president from 81 to 83 as in the military and he's media. a soldier properly so called i.e he was not promoted he went through the ranks so he actually is a soldier and it's from katina state man I, let's we'll go back to them let me let me go on zoom because uh, we are covering this not just in ghana but we're also um covering this in nigeria i have someone on zoom don't i uh, producer give me direction so let's speak to mansoor ibrahim uh, mansoor ibrahim is a journalist who covered guess who bernard uh, Kwankwaso. Uh, yeah, Rabi, he, so he covered him in Kano State, but he's back to his base in Lagos. Uh, Mansour, you're welcome to City TV's coverage in Accra. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me, um, You are back from Kano since uh, covering uh, Kwankwa. So tell us how he's doing up north and how the campaign was before we talk about the national elections. Yeah, he's doing extremely well. In fact, out of the political governments for Kano State, uh, about uh, 41 has been called, so they are left with uh, three local governments and he's, he's coasting to the victory for Kano State. So, yeah, for the fact that uh, he's from Kano, that's a big, uh, a big plus for him. And for the fact that he's the founder of the party, it's a big plus for him again. So, he's a big uh, politician to reckon with when it comes to Nigerian politics. And again, with the way the voting pattern has gone, he has actually, his vote has actually affected the opposition party, which is the People's Democratic Party, PDP. He was in the party and he left. And uh, he went, ahead, in less than a year, he went ahead to create his own party. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, his, his party is doing extremely well, winning Senate, uh, Senate, uh, the Senate and uh, some House of Reds in some, some of the northern states. Is this his first so time? At, well. Is this his first time at, at the presidency, or he's done this a number of times? His party is old and has a lot of structures, and maybe senators already. Uh, no, this is the first time he's contesting from his own political party because the party is less than a year. 
So this is his first time uh, trying to uh, contest for the, for, for the seat of the president. Your country always has new parties ahead of you. A, a, a party, two party system almost, even though we have other parties, new parties are created. So it's interesting. How about the national picture? How is it looking like? We've seen the results coming through from Lagos, where you are currently reporting to us from. Um, yes. Tinubu losing in his own home. Yeah, how, 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 do you, how, how are you reading these numbers for us? Yeah, it's a big deal because, uh, you know, for a presidential candidate losing his home state is a big blow to the political party and to the to the ruling party, of course. But uh, you have to understand that the politics of Nigeria is quite dynamic because uh, the, most of the people that came that took out to vote, I don't have the figures yet, but majority of them are the youth. And in the past, in the past, in labor states, people are usually. Uh, they don't usually come out in numbers to cast their vote, but this time around, there is this sense of belonging that, okay, this is our time to vote. We've seen someone in a political party that have said, I will change Nigeria if you vote me in, and that's the person of uh, Peter Obi, the presidential candidate for Labour Party, who uh, in less than uh, 30 minutes ago took uh, one uh, Lagos state, which is the home state for uh, Bola Tinubu, the presidential candidate for for the APC. So you have to understand that there is this trend of, if you remember the answers that happened uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. so there is this still anger in the people of uh, in quotes, that's what they are saying, that we are the structure. You can't keep controlling us for years. So it's just a message to send to the current ruling party that, okay, if you want to take uh, power from the Igbo, and forgive me for using ethnicity, but we do know that when it comes to it, your elections are mostly on ethnic lines. How is it that Peter Obi wins Lagos, and he's not just winning with a small number? Consider the 500,000 that he has won as the first time he's running, and he gets half the million votes in an area he has never lived, I mean, run uh, for, for, for office before. And he's running against a former Lagos, the Lagos boss, who has built the current city, as we are told. Is it ethnicity that worked for Tinubu? or is a youthful population in Lagos, or the fact that Lagos is a cosmopolitan commercial capital of Nigeria? What worked for, Tinu, uh, for, for Peter Obi? I think the last, your last point is basically what worked is in a cosmopolitan, where you can find all the whole tribe in the, in the, in the country, the Igbo, the Hausa, the Yoruba. Yes, the Yorubas, uh, they have the large numbers, but you understand that. There was this crisis, there's what we call protest votes. So what I see that worked against the current, uh, the ruling party is what we call protest votes. votes. So the figures that we are seeing, apart from the fact that some people voted based on ethnicity, uh, religion, and uh, okay, those two basic things, but the protest vote came in, that, in, in the moment where the country is currently facing uh, cash scarcity, fuel scarcity. So majority of people that came out came to vent their anger for the federal government and by, you know, uh, voting against the ruling party, by voting in, by, by voting the Labour Party, which is the new kid on the block, shows how, you know, uh, how, what, what, uh, how Things are people changing. Are Arabs, so, oh, yes, yeah. things are changing. Yeah. In Nigeria. And people are, people are tired. Okay. I'm like, okay, how can you put me through this stress and you're telling me to vote for to you? Vote. No. Let, before you go, I have a quick change. question for you, Mansoor. I look at your forehead, okay. I see that you are a Muslim. Um, of course. <laughs> good. You have two Muslims on the ticket. 
I mean, and I'm using just the top three. Atiku okay. is a Muslim from the north. Tinubu is a Muslim from southwest. If it, I mean, a Muslim, a whole Muslim. A Muslim is a Muslim's brother. Who truly is Muslim in the estimation of Nigerian northern Muslims? Is it Tinubu or is Atiku because he's their neighbor? I think it will have to be Atiku. It will go for Atiku. That's where we have that. We look at it from the angle of uh, voting pattern, where for you to win any presidential election, if you don't have the northern, the northern support, trust me, you're not going to get the, the, the seat. If you look at the merger between uh, ACA and uh, Buhari's party back then, so you will see that if if Buhari kept running, all the all the figures he was getting from his zone couldn't assist him in voting. But because of the merger between the southwest and the northern votes, that was why he was able to come into power in twenty fifteen and at mm. the same time in twenty nineteen. Okay. So the northern the northern part, uh is the northern region is very, very important when you want to win any presidential election yeah, okay. in Nigeria. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Mansur. We'll come back to you uh, again in the coming hours and days uh, if there's someone development to share with us. Thank you so much. Mansur Ibrahim is a Nigerian journalist. Thank He's uh, he covered Kano, but he's based in Lagos. Um, let's go to the western side of the country, southwest, Ondo State, and uh, speak to Fidelis David. He is a journalist there uh, with the with the day, with the day, this day newspaper. Uh, Fidelis, you're welcome to City FM and City TV's coverage in Accra. Tell us about the west generally, and then focus on Ondo. How the elections have been so far. I did that here. As well as uh, human rights, uh, uh, as well as sure of uh, it, it, it. so uh, on those days, uh, this will be the first time why people will define the vow. Fidelis, Fidelis, uh, uh, the, the network is tricky. Um, we'll try and work at the technical side of things and return to you. Apologies, uh, we'll try to work on the on the Zoom network and then revert to Fidelis, who is reporting to us uh, from Ondo State. Bernard, yeah. Ondo State, he has two presidential candidates coming from his state. He was just saying about... Yeah, ...them may not do that well, but they, 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 they pretty much are doing well. Let's go back to the issue of uh, Peter Obi. But did they give you the Kano results, your previous report? I would have loved to. The Kano result is not out yet, is it? Because he said that Rabiu Kwakwanso was doing well. It, 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 you, had, you had that. Yeah. You mentioned no. that he had the... Uh... Yeah, we don't have Kano yet. So what I'm trying to do is to give you the regional picture so far. So your reporter from Kano, I think the point he makes about Rabiu Kwakwanso is a point we'll come back to because Rabiu's victory in Kano will affect Atiku more than it will affect everybody else. Okay. Because Atiku says where the pool is numbers from the north. Now, to complicate matters further, I just got the results for Jigawa State. Mm -hmm. Now, Jigawa is one of the seven states in the northwest, right? Now, in 2019, Buhari got 794,000 votes in Jigawa State. So, now that's almost 800,000 votes in Jigawa State. That's his neighboring states. Yes. And Atiku in that election got 289,000. So he's losing by like a factor of a third in 2019. Four twenty-one thousand three ninety votes. Of course, that's much lower than what uh, Buhari got, Buhari but that's still significant. That's half. And Atiku got three eighty-six thousand. So Bola Metinubu defeated uh, Atiku uh, Ibrahim in Jigawa State by close to. 40,000 votes. Jigawa State. So that. So, so. 
performance of a candidate outside his traditional stronghold and the spread issues. Rabiu Kwakwanso got 98,234 in Nigeria State. But that will be just 1,800. Nothing at all. You see what's going on. So, Atiku is the candidate for the North, but Bola gets 421,000. So, Bola has actually won a Northern State. That's Jigawa State. And Jigawa is close to... Oh, the Jigawa State, state is Jigawa. close to the state where, where, where Atiku is from, isn't it? Yes. Or, so or Jiga, no, 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 no. Atiku no, no. is from... And then below Jigawa State is Bauchi State. And then, of course, uh, Yobe State on its right. But the significant point is that it's, it's next to Kano. It's a northwestern state. Mm -hmm. And Atiku did not win. Bola so, Tinubu has won Jigawa State. But the other fascinating story you are hearing right now is that whilst the coalition is going on, <laughs> this is so funny, uh, Atiku is projected to win Akwaibo. In fact, Yobe State is also out. Yes, and you Akwaibom is not central. Akwai no, 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 Sandra. No, Akwaibom is way south. South. Akwaibom is south, south, and Akwaibom is a strong seat for the PDP. So you would have expected Peter Obi to use the benefits of being from the southeast to win the south, south, being a Christian. But I am the the final numbers are not. But we are told that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Tinubu. Atiku, in, Atiku is winning. Atiku South, South. is going to win Akwaibo. That's complicated. See, see, see what's happening. So the, the election is not over at all. It's not clear. Sky is so. Let's Sky, just. Sky, what do you have? You have so. What do you have? The Sky? Yobe State. Um, the so Yobe is not east. Yeah. The results are just in. Yes. And then, according to the results published by the INEC, we have one hundred ninety-eight thousand. Atiku. 567 for the PDP. This is Atiku's Atiku. um, you know, number. Mm -hmm. And then you have the APC. Uh, Tinubu. Tinubu. 151. And then you have the NNPP, which is the... Uh, Kwa Rabiu. Kwa 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 18,000. 18,270. And, and then, then the Labour Party. 2,000. Uh -huh. And okay. then also, there is also uh, the Quara State. Um, is also, is Quara out? Yeah. Okay, if you can give me that. Yeah, the Quara, we have... Um, Sorry, hold on. I, I need a new pen. Okay. Yeah, this is very important. I need to write this guy. So okay. if I can get a pen. Yes. The Quara, the results show that... The oh, Sandra, lend me your pen. Let me, let me, let me yes. try and go back on, yes. on the, on the, the Zoom. I'm told okay. that uh, the line to Fidelis may, to get a may, be, may be clearer now. Uh, Fidelis, um, you're joining us from Indo. Indo apologies. Um, we lost you there. You were giving us a general picture for the region that you are covering and the state that you are covering. Tell us more, please. As I said, uh, the networks of Ondo State, actually it's coming from uh, the presidential candidate of the Democratic Party, Adi Wale Adi Bayer, that of of votes are buying and the courtesy of the cash uh, This time around, they want to choose a higher of the spectrum. They want to choose on the election when peacefully there was no cases of uh, Fidelis, uh, Fidelis, I don't know what's happening, but it seems uh, the Southwest network is, is not is not helping. Let's see if it is it will be clearer. Um, Okay, I, I think there's really a difficulty hearing from Fidelis. Uh, he's reporting, he's a journalist with This Day uh, newspaper reporting for us there from 
uh, on those states. Unfortunately, the network is not helpful at all. Let me come back in studio. We're getting some results coming through. Uh, from uh, we, state. We're giving us Sky. There was some results you're giving to us before yeah, we right. had so to go to Zoom. Yeah. Uh, so we we were at uh, we were in Kumara state. state. Exactly. So in which case we have the APC uh, going home with two two hundred sixty seven thousand five hundred seventy two. Uh, votes, the PDP uh, polling 136,909 votes, the Labour Party 31,166 votes, and then the NNPP um, polling 3,141 votes. What's the figure for Labour again? The Labour 31,166. Okay, so... ...in northern state. So Kwara State is in north central. North central. Kwara is actually a Yoruba dominated state. So it's supposed so to Tinubu be. Should... It's a Tinubu state because you have a, in 2019, mm -hmm. um, Buhari won 308,000 votes. That's 69%. Almost 70% of the vote was won by mm -hmm. Tinu, uh, uh, Buhari. Mm -hmm. And then Atiku got 30%, 138,000. And Kwara is, uh, what do you call it, Ilorin. The capital. Okay. So okay. Kwara state, okay. state is a Yoruba state. So Kwara state is very typical Bulame Tinubu, mm -hmm. where you are a Yoruba Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So in 2019, it was 170 30 for APC. Mm -hmm. The key point here is that Atiku has eaten into Tinubu in Kwara because from the 308,000 that Buhari got, it's come down to 263. 263. And Atiku's 138 is also lower, 136, but Tinubu has lost much more mm -hmm. if you compare to Buhari. And Nubi has got 31,000. So for me, the trend I see. It's very checkered, but Atiku is showing himself a national candidate as much as Tinubu. Um, and Peter is... We haven't seen the southeastern and south-south fully. Okay. But apart from Lagos, where Obi has won, he'll probably win all the southeastern states and probably win a lot of the south-south as well. Mm -hmm. But in terms of national character in what we are seeing... It's Atiku Tinubu that we are seeing. But then we we'll also need to see Atiku and Tinubu winning some significant votes in South South and South East before they can also have a proper national character. Because we, if, Tinubu, if Obi sweeps the whole East. Which is why, you see, the, the problem we are, we are facing is that the results are coming in trickles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you, if you have a map that you want to put out, it's too early to see a national picture. But sure. what I'm seeing is the fact that. Even when Tinubu loses the North, mm -hmm. he still gets as much as 40 or 50 percent. Even side. when Atiku loses the Southwest, he still gets about 40 or 50 percent. Mm -hmm. But for Peter Obi, he's doing well. He's won Lagos, mm -hmm. but he hasn't won anywhere else, else apart from the South. Is that we know he will win? Mm -hmm. So it's a look. It's looking uh, dice. Friends and I go addressed by uh, this man we all know. Uh, what's his name? Dele Momodu. Mm -hmm. It was curious to find the PD from Lagos where they believe the Liberal Party is winning. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So why will why will PDP go and hold the press conference and say, hey, don't touch? The it's almost like. NDC is doing a position and say that Indo is winning central region, so don't touch his vote. <laughs> yes. So for, it's very significant for the opposition for Tinubu to lose Lagos. Because I believe that if they get into a runoff, mm -hmm. they would hope that yes. some of the support that Peter Obi gets in Lagos mm -hmm. could inure to their benefit. Which is why they were quite strident in their points during the press conference that the INS will not try and manipulate them. So they, 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 they know they've lost Lagos, so, but they say no, <laughs> they're the person within Lagos. Because they need that for To remain. <laughs> yes, it's Peter Obi. So, Kwara State, I think Atiku, Atiku will be happy with his results there. Again, the other thing you need to know is that this, this is not fair to just use the last election results. I need to look. If I had more time, I've gone to the gubernatorial elections, the strength of the parties on the ground. Mm -hmm. For example, there are certain governors who have. De so, for example, Four governors in uh, <laughs> the PDP say they don't support Atiku. Mm -hmm. There are governors in uh, APC states who are also angry with Buhari and on behalf of, 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 of uh, uh, Bola. Uh, so you, you, some of the, the, the results we have to explain on the basis, for example, Governor Wiki in one of the southeastern states, 
He's been very clear his, his lack of support for his own party's candidate. And because the governors are very powerful, that can also affect the turnout. So when the results come in, we can then go into, if you ask me why this number is here, then I can tell you that factor one, national issue, factor two, local issue, factor three, tribal issue. Mm -hmm. so, really so the first take out. Uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Atiku Ibrahim. But, but this is still uh, uh, the figures that have come through, the states that have come through out of 36 plus federal so, We have a few. We have Ogun, one. Mm -hmm. We have Ekiti, two. Mm -hmm. We have Lagos. This right. is three out of the southwest, mm -hmm. five. Uh, the northwest, we have Jigawa and Katsina. Mm -hmm. We have two out of seven. Mm -hmm. The yes, five now. Yes, the north central we have Quara, one out of seven. Mm -hmm. The south south we don't have any. Aqua e bomb is actually not even confirmed, so mm -hmm. we don't have any from south south. The Southeast we don't have any. So, so we have six states out of yeah, so, so let's go to the thing. We have Katsina, yes, one, we have Jigawa, mm -hmm. two, uh, we have Yobe, three, three. we have um. Quara, four. We have um, Lagos, five. We have Oshun. Oshun is out. We have Oshun State, six. six. We have Ogun State, seven. seven. We have Ekiti State. So sorry, we have actually a few more. So for Southwest, we have, in fact, Southwest, we have four out of six. We have Ogun State, we have Lagos State, we have Oshun State, we have Ekiti State. So eight states are out. So right? so Southwest has four out of six confirmed. But uh, my, my my point is that out of thirty six. that southwest has six states and four out of six are out then you have a picture you have a picture so you can say the southwest picture tells us a lot so more. give us give just give us a vote that come with these states that we okay so for with, south, that are officially out for, for southwest we have uh, just give me a minute so Ogun southwest state. is supposed to be tinubu's backyard yes we have ogun state in southwest ogun state is where obasanjo is from mm -hmm. bola met tinubu got three forty one thousand five fifty four Atiku has 123,831. Pitaobi has 85,826. Now, in Ogun State in 2019, it was 60% APC, 40% PDP, which is the same thing. So there's, there's been no change. Mm -hmm. because, but of course, uh, Buhari had 281,000, oh, yeah. but uh, Tinubu has moved it to 361. Okay. Okay. Atiku had 194. He's come down to 123. So Ogun State has been held by the APC strongly. Uh, Oshun State, Oshun State is also uh, in the southwest. Atiku, right? Which is and Oshun so State Atiku, is okay in 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 yes. Tinubu's yes. In the southwest. Oshun State, Atiku got three fifty four thousand three sixty six PDP strong PDP. Tinubu got three forty three thousand. What happened in Oshun State in um, what do you call it in? Um, in uh, 2019, it was 50 50. In 2019, APC got 50%. And Atiku got 337. So Buhari beat Atiku by 10,000 in Oshun State in 2019. In 2023, Atiku has beaten Tinubu. You would have he did not. So Atiku has moved from 337 to 354, and Tinubu has reduced from 347 to 343. And Obi didn't get much, just 23,000. So my point is, if you, 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 have, you have Lagos, Oshun, Ogun, you have Ekiti State, all so, out. So the only southwestern states left is Oyo State and Ondo State, which your colleague was trying to give you. So we'll be waiting, so we're waiting for those two. And Two of the southwestern states, uh, Tinubu has lost. He's lost Lagos, and he's lost Oshun State. He's lost and then uh, Bola has maintained uh, two. Okay, so it is his. He, it is his step. Ideally, we should have expected him to. He sweep. should sweep. He should yeah. sweep and all non-Lagos southwestern states. And he's, he's but he's won only Ogun. And, and lost Lagos, and which is very significant. It's lost Lagos, it's lost Oshun State. Very, very so the PDP's press conference in an hour before 
tells you that they are they are they are they smell blood. I, I think the PDP feels they will do well to to win uh, Oshun State and to be projected to win uh, what do you call it Akwaibom. It means Ati Atiku is doing well. So then we look at the north. Yes. Where Atiku, we are expecting because they are both Muslims, he is originally the northeast and the northwest resource. Sky will give us the northeast resource, which you just gave us a short one. The resource. northwest resource that are out, Katina State, this is Buhari State, mm -hmm. Atiku won, but it was very close. Mm -hmm. He got 489,045, right? And uh, uh, Bola Ahmed, got 482. So it's a 7,000 gap. Now, key point. In 2019, Buhari wanted to have how many? 1.2 million. This is home state. And uh, Atiku got 300,000. So it's almost 700,000. In fact, almost, almost 900,000 gap. Right? But Atiku and Bola have split Katina State. Right? So again, I'm telling you. So Katina State, you are saying Northness will vote for Atiku. Well, Bola has gotten half a has million votes there. In the north, I think we go for eighty-nine thousand. Bola go for eighty-two. This is Katsina State. Right. Katsina State is like, you know, they and have, of course, it, it tells you that that's the home of the current president. And I think the president had to do what he did to tell them that he's not because don't forget, as you said, the mosques are saying vote for at, vote for at, 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 Atiku. Who is from your? But Bola is Buhari's party. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's it's it, oh we got sixty nine thousand. Oh, from the north, the northeast, um, the two states you gave us. Uh, so I gave you Yobe um, and the numbers one hundred ninety eight thousand five hundred sixty seven for the PDP, in which case Atiku uh, won that. The APC got one hundred fifty one thousand four hundred fifty nine. Um, one hundred fifty one. One hundred fifty one thousand. Yes. Four fifty nine. Yeah, four fifty nine. And then the NNPP um, got eighteen thousand. 270 votes, and then the Labour Party doing really, really minimally there, um, 2,460. <laughs> <laughs> Labour <laughs> Labor, Labor is, is a southern phenomenon, it seems. Well, well maybe. Uh, and, 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 and let's wait for these states. Uh, Federal Capital Territory, mm -hmm. Kogi State, mm -hmm. Benue State, mm -hmm. Nasarawa, mm -hmm. and Plateau. Mm -hmm. These are the North Central states that Peter Obi is expected to do well, mm -hmm. in addition to where he's going to do well in the South South. So, F FCT, which is Abuja, which is here to come, Nasarawa yeah. State, which is next to Kogi State, Plateau State, where Joss is, and Benue State. Those states, uh, Peter Obi is expected to do very well. D does Abuja have the same characteristics as Lagos because it's a capital, or is this an administrative capital where the status quo there is not? as cosmopolitan as it is in Lagos. PDP won Lagos in 2019. They got uh, almost 260,000 votes, 63%. APC got 36%. Uh, let's go a bit further back to see if we're in the same set. I will probably put FCC and Lagos in the same category. Who in FCT are not from there, but they, they don't count it as a state. No, they count it as a they state. As so a so it, it's so you need to win a certain proportion there to to be able to make yes. it to the top. So federal capital territory is quite important, but it's not important in these numbers. It's important in the fact that you need to get something sizable there because it's almost like a newly carved out area. This is City TV's coverage. Uh, we are bringing you Nigeria this size, um, and it has to do with the. Uh, biggest democracy on the continent of Africa going to the polls. The elections were held on Saturday. Uh, the results are still trickling in. Uh, over the last few hours, we've been sharing with you uh, the results that we have so far. Uh, out of 36 states, uh, we have a, a, few, a few results coming through. Let's go back to the country and speak to Ben Ezeamalu. He is with Premium Times. Ben, you're welcome to City TV's coverage in Accra. Ben, can you hear me? Uh, let me make a correction. I can hear you. I want to make a correction. 
Sorry, Ben, if you could just restate that. I didn't hear you. I said I want to make a correction. Yes, please go ahead. I work with the Africa Report now. You work with what? With the Africa Report. Africa Report, okay, 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 that's fine. Apologies for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, where are you based okay. now? I'm based in Lagos. So you're in Lagos State? Yes. Is that where you covered or you just returned to base? So that's why I covered. Okay. Tell us about the election. We've seen the results coming through. Um, are you surprised? Um, yes and no. no. Can you hear me very well? Yes. So give me, give me, give me yes first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm surprised because um, I mean, in in somewhere like Lagos. I I did not I was expecting price and and, um, and your and your reason me. is your reason ethnic or issues Sorry is your reason based on the ethnicity of Lagos or the ethnic makeup of Lagos or the national issues that are at play, the economy, you know, oh, security uh, and all of those things. Why do you think it, it, that even though you expected Peter Obi to do well in Lagos, not as well as he did? Yeah, it, it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, ethnic being one of them, you know, but, but when, when you look at um, Historically, how Lagos has voted for the ruling party in Lagos, you know, they, they've, they've always won in Lagos, you know. So, here, you know, has played a, a huge part in what has happened, you know, but I, I didn't expect that it would be this massive, like it's, it blew me out like I, 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 it was so shocking to to to, to see. You know. I see. Now, when it comes to the no parts where yeah. you didn't you didn't expect it to go the way it went, it means you expected Tinubu to win that. Obviously, because he was governor, he's he's Yoruba. Is that is that your reading, your reasoning, or you have? You know, he, he is Yoruba. You know, he he. So not 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 just that he has been able to. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Why? So much noise. Oh, oh I can hear you. Please proceed. So, yeah. So he, he has been able to demonstrate over the years that um, he he has what it takes. You know, to hold on to Lagos, even when Lagos was in the opposition. For um, almost um, 16 years, we were still able to hold on to Lagos. You know, so that that made us have that element of respect. You know, that even beyond the ethnicity, beyond the religion, beyond everything. That You know, so yes, I I I really didn't expect him to 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 lose the way the way he did. You know, I mean, Lagos Lagos is um, ideally should be his stronghold. You know, I mean, Tinubu, we are I mean, told it, Tinubu, we are told has created politicians, has made politicians. He is the godfather. Yeah. What yeah. went wrong for him in his own backyard by ten thousand votes plus? That's how much. Uh, that's what he lost um, the election yeah. by. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think for for now it, it will be difficult to pinpoint exactly what went wrong. But um, I mean, I could hazard a guess. One of them would be that because he 
he moved to Federal, you know, he, he left Lagos for Abuja. I mean, he just, he came back to Lagos um, about uh, four days to the election. Oh. You know, he had been traveling all over Nigeria for the past two, three months, you know? So, he did Lagos was... Yes, that, 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 that's one of it, you know. And also the fact that, I mean, all the while that his party has been winning Lagos, he had been in Lagos. He had not ever, he had never moved out of Lagos. You know, this is the first time that ahead of an election, he is out of Lagos, you know, canvassing for votes across the country. So that, that could be a But why is that way? You know, but obviously it, it didn't work out the way it, it, it planned. So that, that, that's what um, What was the Buhari factor? What, what was the Buhari factor in this election for Tinubu? Well, um, when you talk about the Buhari factor, um, I did it in Nigeria elections. It's, it's always in the northern part of Nigeria, you know, where you have the uh, house as full and it's the Muslims, you know. So that, that's what has worked for Tinobu during in this election. Because if you, if you look at the numbers coming in, you know, you will see that in the northwest, where Buhari is from, um, he has not done very bad. I mean, he, I think he, he even won I, I, I'm not sure, but I think he has gotten a lot of votes in the northwest, you know. And in the northeast, where his um, running mate is from, he has not done badly, too. You know? So, essentially, what Buhari has done for him is that he has been able to to galvanize a part of his um, core, core loyalists, his fan base, you know, to cast their votes for, for the APC candidates. Don't forget that He's also running on a Muslim Muslim ticket. Mm -hmm. And over there in the north, religion is a big factor when it comes to elections like this. I, I so, see. Is there a suspicion that Buhari didn't necessarily support Tinubu? Did that suspicion go to the ground and reflected in the ballot boxes? Um it, in a way, yes. Although that, that suspicion, the, the, we, we didn't get um, concrete evidence to back that up. You know, it's just reading the president's body language and, you know, how he, he has participated in the campaign rally, you know. But you would think that the APC should win in the president's home state. Mm, mm. At least, at the, at the least, you know. But the PDP won there from the result I, I have to mm, you know. Mm. He so lost you, 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 Yeah. So you, you, could, you could say that, yes, the president supported the APC candidate, but there was that, the, that, that, that um, devotion was, was not there, you know. That passion wasn't really there. Thank you so much. No. Uh, that's and the story is that Tinubu has lost Lagos. Very big a deal um, because yeah. Tinubu from the southwest, Yoruba and all of that, Lagos commercial capital, very necessary for him to make a point. But that seat, or having lost that state uh, to uh, Peter Obi, that's a moral victory, a political victory, maybe not statistic, but a moral victory for Peter Obi, who comes from the East to come and defeat the godfather of Nigerian politics in his own turf. Um, so, 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 Sky, I don't know if you're listening there to Ben. Mm -hmm. uh, he's given us some of the reasons. Yeah. Um, the suspicion about Buhari's non support maybe could reflect in the fact that. You know, Tinubu lost in Buhari's home states. You know, that he was going to go public with support mm -hmm. for um, Tinubu.
sure that he actually wanted to derail you know the, the campaign exactly because you know consistently there was pressure on him to announce as to who he was going to support I think his attitude was that look I want free fair elections I do not want it to seem as though I am electing the next president for Nigerians it was up to the people of Nigeria to, to decide. decide but we all know that generally you have a sitting president you know support the candidate of his political party much less you're talking about someone who played a key part in bringing you to the ticket and Bola Tinubu made the that he made, the current president would not have been president. And therefore, there needed to be that commitment from him. Unfortunately, it, it took such a long time for that support to even come. And, and you know that when the elections were going on on Saturday, the president of the republic, who signed into law, a bill which eventually became a law that you cannot vote and show or display your vote or even tell anybody about who you voted for. He, the president, having voted, elected to display his, um, his vote to the generality of the people as to dispel what was a strong suspicion that he was not behind the candidate. Now, the question you ask yourself is, what exactly would have been the reason? Uh, it would seem as though maybe there may have been a falling out. Again, the question of the vice president, who many people thought was going to be the natural successor in this particular case, that did not happen because Bola Tinubu, who basically, as you, you rightly stated, himself. you know, is, is, is the, 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 the godfather presently of Nigerian politics, came in there to bully the, 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 the fairly young, uh, younger, you know, candidate mm -hmm. out of the race. So. Mm -hmm. It's who a he, complex who issue. he created, anyway. <laughs> it's a complex issue. Um, the, 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 the religious politics is also strongly at play there. Because if we look at the fact that he's a Muslim, moment because they won two elections with it. Of course, the history of that political party itself is checking just like the Nigerian mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. People form political parties at will. And they are able to use it to prosecute a winning election. Why would I have thought that the PDP would have continued its, its, its electoral you know, victory, victories? Victory. But for some reason, over the last eight years or so, they've not been able to do that. So when you know the APC made its entry into the presidency, the expectation was that okay, there will be a seamless transition from you know the current president to the vice president. But for some reason, Bola came in and dislodged. Uh, what do you call it? The influence of the the the, the, the vice president, Masi Banjo. who was seen as a natural successor. Now, the question that many people are not ad addressing their mind to is the role of Atiku Abubakar. Now, let me deal with the question of issues around his corruption because mm -hmm. we raised yes, that I raised that earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, you would know That's that. Tinubu. Uh, no, I'm talking about Atiku at this point. Okay, both of them actually have those allegations <laughs> around no, their necks. No, next. but, but you see, in the case of Atiku, mm -hmm. as we speak, there is a case filed against him at the High Court. And incidentally, the man who... ...that there is no way he's going to stop... to siphon a lot of public funds out of the Nigerian economy. And you remember that the U.S. government successfully prosecuted one of the people involved in all of these allegations, and the conversation was around whether or not Atiku should not be prosecuted. Much later, we also heard a confirmation from the, Nigeria, uh, the, the U.S. government that the, the, one of the wives, one of the four wives of um, Atiku. Atiku, actually helped him to ferry out in excess of four million, four, 40 million US dollars out of the, the public press or out of the country. Now, if you look at all of these things, they go to reinforce a certain point, which the youth have been holding on to, that the dinosaurs who have been in charge of Nigerian politics for all these years should move, should move so that a person like Obi that would ultimately 
decide the elections is an entirely different matter. But let's about it about the, the the quality of education that is received you know questions have been raised as to whether where he went to school you know there have been there has been lack of clarity <laughs> as to what his certificate basically is mm -hmm. at the highest level and then also issues about his health people have been consistently concerned about whether they would have another Yaradoa in their making a president who died in office spent a lot of years outside the republic is trying to get well again buhari, buhari himself, himself has had to spend a lot of years outside they the call republic. him absentee president exactly in the uk particularly so if you look at these issues People while lagos peace. will be a melting pot for all nigerians coming there together to do business we're told that the economy of lagos if you look at the gmp is bigger than many of the african economies put together do you understand so while you would expect that that will be something that will go for him it will seem that we are reading a new script and that may largely be because of votes are still trickling in i mean we only have um, a couple of local, local governments the um the routine and results for a couple of local governments have been revealed so you know the votes are still the um, results are still trickling in, so we're still holding. So the results of Anambra, the, the result of Anambra out. itself is not out formally. We don't even have a projection, do no, we? No, 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 not fully. Now, the, the results from the HGA level, they're still trickling in, you know, at the State Pollution Center. So we, we are still waiting on that uh, to see how the whole thing unfolds. Okay. How are people in Anambra State and uh, Southeast generally um, looking at Peter Obi's picture nationally, is he considered as an Igbo candidate or the candidate who is coming to change the dual poly that you have in your country, or he has transcended ethnicity and possibly going to be the first guy from the East to be a president who is doing that on his own merit and not necessarily because of his ethnicity? How, how, how is he seen? Um, um, in all honesty, it's actually a combination of um, you know, a, a number of factors. You have um, those who are voting in uh, Peter Obi because um, he's basically one of one of them. You know, he's a person of Igbo descent. Um, he's from the southeast. He's from Anambra State. You have people who have um, you know vested interest in such ways. You know, uh, you still have um, uh, those who are who are uh, you know who uh, are much more educated. You know, across um, across the zones who think. Um, uh, Peter will be those offer um, a, you know, a real chance at uh, transforming Nigeria and tackling uh, some of the uh, critical issues Nigeria is facing at this point in time. So it's 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 all you have um, uh, you have voters putting across all uh, you know uh, all of those factors and you know voting accordingly. I see, but what is his track record in a number of states? What do people know Peter Obi for or remember him for? Uh, uh, most, uh, mostly, uh, uh, Peter Obi has um, often hammered on uh, uh, his um, work in Anambra State in the area of um, education, um, in the area of um, uh, security as well. You know, obviously, security uh, sec there's still security concerns within Anambra State now, and then, uh, uh, but uh, a, a lot of people would argue with you that um, uh, we are gradually seeing uh, some some changes, especially when you consider. You know how it has been. You know it, it worked, once was you know in the past, and Obi um, is also you know um, uh, upheld as um, this um, a sort of uh, prudent leader who you know, has a track record of being able to like effectively manage the um, resources um, of, of the states. You know it, it's one of those things, and he prides himself as you know when he talks about them, his um, uh, track record. I know the polls are looking good for him, but does he really stand a chance of going to the Asorok? Um, uh, you know, if you consider a lot the, the, um, the, all the factors at play here, you know, his strengths, his weaknesses, uh, I mean, you, you can only say that that remains to be seen, you know, as we wait out um, uh, the results, and the, you know, the full results from uh, the elections, we'll see how that turns out. But um, he does really have um, a very, very solid uh, uh, voter base in the southeast, you know. Um, I, I cover the predominantly... Um, uh, and our child local government, you know, I was at his ward in Angolo. You know, he witnessed a massive uh, voter turnout. You know, there was jubilation on the streets. 
you have them uh, people uh, following him to his polling units to uh, to uh, see him cast his votes. After he after he casted uh, you know, his votes, you had them um, people following him to his house. You know, basically jubilating, praying for him. You had people at the, uh, at the local uh, level, people at the grassroots. Uh, you know, uh, being uh, a chief to see him. Uh, in, you know, emerge uh, president. So the, uh, there's there's really a, a positive energy going on there, especially in the southeast, where uh, 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 this will be the first time we're having a major candidate. You know, if uh, uh, Peter will be uh, does um, win this election, he will be emerging as the first elected uh, uh, president of Ibuli State. You know, this mm. is um, especially when you consider that there's been a lot of sentiments around the. Uh, around the, uh, uh, the inclusion of the Igbo people in, in Nigerian politics, mm. you know, since after um, the Civil War of 1967 to 1970, you know, there's been, it's sort of been, uh, uh, there's been uh, underlying sentiment about um, uh, if uh, there, there is actually um, uh, uh, an effort to um, exclude them, the Igbo okay. people from, uh, you know, presidents. It's, it's interesting you go on the ethnic line because um, your constitution was deliberately crafted to ensure that one person does not emerge from one ethnic group and ends up winning the presidency. He has to do well in the north as well if he were to become a president of a federal republic or a federal state like Nigeria. His, the results we are seeing from the north so far don't look good for Peter Obi. However, in Lagos, he has, uh, he has, he has massacred... Uh, uh, Tinubu, how do you read the results in Lagos vis-a-vis -vis what's happening in the north? Um, in Lagos, uh, for example, in Lagos is uh, Lagos is, uh, is a state that has a sort of mixed up. If you consider um, the issue of ethnicity, you have um, people of diverse, um, you know, economic background and social background and ethnic backgrounds. You know. So it's all a mix up. And then it is in Lagos that you have them, you know, much more informed people, people who are educated, people who are uh, well aware of um, in what expectations they have them um, of um, uh, of the next um, uh, in, you know president, you know. So it it's it, it, it became a, a sort of um, battleground for all the candidates. And then obviously we could see um, that the Peter Obi did uh, very very well in uh, in, uh, in, in Lagos. Lagos as well. Mm -hmm. in the, in, in, in the north, uh, you know, while, while uh, we, I think we, should, we, we can only wait out um, uh, results uh, from uh, from that end. Let's see how it's all unfolds. Really, okay. but Very well. you know, there, there are a lot of factors at play. You can't uh, really predict how uh, the whole thing turns out. Mm. Thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Stephen. That's Stephen Kenechi. He's a Nigerian journalist uh, with a cable, and he was speaking to us uh, from Anambra State, the home state of Peter Obi, who has gone to cause a major upset in Lagos, <clears throat> possibly uh, days the APC, <laughs> uh, whose rep is actually in studio with me now, Otumba Lukman Taiwo Bakari, is the APC West Africa PR, the Public Affairs Director of, of APC. You're welcome to our studios. Thank you very much. Have you recovered from the shock in Lagos? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that Bernard is laughing loud. Mm. <laughs> but I think this is not the first time and non Yoruba non person will win in Lagos in 1979. Zik of Africa, Dr. Nandi Azikwe won, won in Lagos State, NCNC. So if uh, His Excellency Peter Obi is winning in Lagos, it shouldn't be a news. Yes, uh, it was, it, it, it really shocked me. I was surprised. I, I never believed that he can perform up to this level. But uh, I think we are, we, we, we are, we are learning from, from that victory of uh, Peter Obi in Lagos State. But you know, you should know that Lagos State is one state out of 36 and very capital territory. So, but a very significant state for you to have won, considering that your, your candidate was the governor and we are told he's the creator of the modern Lagos. He should have won that seat. At least, if for nothing at all, you should win your home, Tef. Yeah, you are, you are right. But uh, you, should, you should know that there is time for everything. And secondly, I'm highly disappointed with the the House of Rep member, the senators, the party faithful, the local government chairman, they've not done enough mobilization. When you look at the results, when you look at the results of the Lagos State, you could see that it's less, the, the participants in that elections are less than 30% of the registered voters. That is extremely low. So, and that is the job of the party member. They should have mobilized. And the scarcity, the money with the scarcity is scarcity of Naira as well has an effect because they have to mobilize. But uh, I want to say that they should have, the party member in Lagos, they should have known that something is coming. This is a party in power. 
party in power. But you see, when, even when you look at when you look at when you look at 2019, 2015, election in Lagos State is always competitive between the PDP and APC. But now, the, the, the same people that vote for PDP are the same people going to vote for Peter Obina. You could see the PDP uh, has vote. gone down. So that, almost. That, that, that tells you that tells you the PDP member, they will ignore PDP in Lagos. So you should even appreciate APC that at least we can still stand our feet in Lagos State. <laughs> because, because if PDP could not be able to be uh, there is nowhere to be found. So you should know that we are not. Yes, I agree with you that we have, we have not done well. And every APC member, I was not happy I've been speaking on my voices yesterday towards towards the Lagos, uh, the party leaders in Lagos State. But it doesn't mean that, uh, that that's, the, that's the outcome of the national... Could it be that you were busily focusing on PDP in Lagos, you forgot that there's a third guy uh, called Labour uh, in there who has just come in to surprise you? No, gender, gender, gender shouldn't have been our problem, the PDP candidate for Lagos State governorship. It's not our problem. But like what I... My own, I've not been able to go to the details because, you know, uh, I could see that Tinubu is not in Lagos. He is the coordinator in Lagos. He always put his mind and his effort everywhere. He always be there. He's a very hard-working man since 1999 for Lagos State. Whether he's contesting or not, he has not been contesting since 2007. But he has been working so hard. But, and I expected the party leaders to have worked for him as he is busy to go other state. He has traveled other state. And this result in Lagos State has really shown that the party member didn't work. The people he left him. behind didn't the do people he left behind did not done the job. Let's look at the national picture now. Um, there is a view that it was a mistake to have put Tinubu on the flag for your party and that let him do the back row work that he's been doing and put someone else. In fact, there's a view that it should have been Osibanjo's natural succession, which you post stole from him and gave to Tinubu. What do you say to that? Is that not what is coming back to bite you? Because looking at the results you are getting from Southwest, I mean, South, South results are yet to come through, but you need the Christians of the South to support the vote or the complement the votes of the North before you can say you are truly a party in power. What do you make of that? I think let me correct that statement that we stole from, from Oshibaji to Tinubu. It was an election, it was a primary, and the, the party structures are there. People will always be there to, to vote for whosoever they, they want. It's not about how young the person. We have, we have had a, young, a younger president in that country in respect of uh, former president, uh, John, good, uh, good Lord Jonathan. Mm -hmm. What was the result? I think we should be focused on who can solve the problem. Everybody agreed that Ashwa Jubala Meh Chinubu has, has done pretty well in Lagos State in terms of transformation. And we shouldn't take that away from him. And we should be able to look at that, those areas. We should forget about it. Yes, age matters. And for somebody that has gone, he has campaigned for three months during the primaries. He has campaigned for six months to win to seven months during general election campaign. And He's strong. Uh, uh, that, 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 so but I myself cannot do that. I will break down. We, we won't have a, a, a Yara Dua on our hands or a Buhari on our hands, you think, if, if he won? Uh, th I think I think this is the same thing. They said they say Buhari will not last four years. And it's now almost to complete his eight years. So people can see anything. This is, uh, this is politics. But people, out of those eight years, how many of them has he spent in hospitals in the UK and all of those places? I don't and know. being absent. And even people claiming that he's a double. I mean, you know, those ones are allegations. But I'm just saying that the kind of things people say about him. Uh, but uh, but uh, even if he's outside, if he's outside the country, he... I don't think the, the government stopped. There is still there is still effective government, and I think since 19, 2019 up to date, I don't think he has traveled. Anybody can get sick at any point. I'm sitting down here. I don't know what is what is going to happen in the next two hours. Are you getting me? So, but what matters is we should focus on what Buhari has done, what he met in 20, 2015, and what he has done till 2020. It's good so, you mention what Buhari has done. Has Buhari properly and truly supported Tinubu in this election? Hundred percent. I know, sure? Mr. President is, is really back in Tinubu full time. And uh, people might read meanings too. You see, everybody will have different attitude. We have the way we handle issues. And if Mr. President is not talking, doesn't mean that he's not supporting Ashwa I mean, He has done everything possible for him. And with the legacy Mr. President wants to leave when he's not that he has left a credible free, fair, and credible election. And that was using one of the policy of the Naira policy he brought on board so that people will not say that he has given a chance for Ashiwaji to buy vote or whatsoever. And this is the first, this is the first election I've ever witnessed since 1999 that they have not seen a vote buying. So I think Mr. President has said, yes, we face some crisis about the implementation of the Naira. But 
Mr. President has done well, and I, I gave him kudos since Saturday when I was when I was following the election. That mm. wow! So I couldn't. Nobody can say that they've bought a vote at one particular. So the action is good for the democracy of Nigeria. The action is good, but are you saying the next four years again we are going to change our naira? So we should be able to look at another area that will be able to curb and eradicate the vote buying. Aside what we are receiving from the media about the results nationally, I'm sure you are you have better figures than we do. How is the national picture looking like for, for your party and other parties? We are going to retain power by the special grace of God with the numbers that are coming in. You know. When people are looking at Nigeria is of two two country, you have two two part two zone, southern zone and northern zone. Are you getting me? So these are what what the the what you are having now. Most of the votes are coming from south, like Lagos State is southwest, and uh, we have lost Lagos State. I think we've lost Osho State too. Mm -hmm. Are you getting those are the two states, and the rest of the state of the south where we win. But our bank, our stronghold, hard are the north. So when, when as I, as I, before I came in, I think with the number on ground, we are still leading with 1.3 million votes. So an article follow with the two, two point something million, we are on the three point something million votes. So the, the, the election generally is between Atiku and uh, Chinumbu, and uh, at the end of the so, day. So you said that the votes from Chinumbu South are what we are seeing, and that should not be, we should not consider that that much because your vote basket is from the North, except that you have a strong contender in the north, a Muslim north now. Atiku is not giving you an easy ride at all in the north too. Are you sure you remain in, in the in the Asa Rock after? That? Yes. Have you consider have you consider our performance at South South? Mm -hmm. What we had in twenty nineteen, what we are having now is bigger than what we had in twenty nineteen and twenty fifteen. We are performing so well in, in the in the south in the south south. And you should also know that Peter Obi is taking away Atiku's vote from southeast mm. all this the huge vote from the southeast are articles vote directly so you should consider and you should consider articles vote as well that so Obi's victory zone. for you in the southeast is good Obi Obi will be Obi, Obi will be almost 85 to 85 to 80 percent in southeast but that cannot make him the president of nigeria um uh, was um, former president of um, uh, sorry president mamadou bari was so popular in the north he always contests the way uh, uh, His Excellency Peter Obi has been contesting on unknown political party. And he has been pulling 12 million votes. He couldn't win. You, cannot, you can be so popular in the North if you, are not, if you are not having a partnership in the South. There's no how you can win, even with, the, with our electoral law. And if somebody like uh, 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 President Mahmoud Dubari who pulled 12 million votes, he couldn't get to Asorok. I don't think at the end of the day, uh, Peter Obi will be able to pull 12 million votes. Let me come to Bernard. Bernard, is it results you have for us, or you yeah, want to analyze? Uh, results. Mm. So <clears throat> I think we have all the six south uh, western states. Okay, all six. Yes, all six are out. Uh, Oshun State is out. We knew that already. That was the main surprise where Atiku won, and he will explain. Lagos State, <clears throat> which Obi won, which he has explained, but. Uh, 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 BAT, as they call him, Bola Metinu has maintained the four. So it's one four out of now, six. Now, a couple of things I need to say. Oyo State, so for those of you who don't understand, so Uba, Ibadan. Okay. Oyo State is Ibadan. Well, if you, if you Ibadan. buy a storybook, you say it, it printed mm -hmm. Ibadan. by Ibadan. Uh, Bola Metinubu got 449,884. Atiku got 182,000. So the point is that he's done much better than the APC in 2019. Uh, in 2019, it was split down the middle. Uh, at, uh, Atiku had 366,000, Buhari had 365. It was split. It was like 50-50 in 2019. Mm -hmm. But this election, Bola Metinubu has got 449,000, and Atiku has come down to 182,000. Peter Obi just got 99,000. So he, if even you add Peter Obi to Atiku, you can say uh, Bola Metinubu has, has, ex has held Oyo with change. Ondo State as well, Ondo State Akure. Ondo State is where Again, in 2019, it was split down the middle. PDP had 275, uh, APC had 241. PDP was holding that state. Yes, yes. Tinubu has won it massively. He's moved to 369,000, almost 370,000. Atiku has dropped to 115,000 from the 275 he had. And Obi just got 47,000. So again, 
um, Ondo State, Oyo State, Equity State, Yoruba dominated states, all won by Bola Metinubu. So the two big stories in the southwest, Lagos, where Peter Obi won, and Oshun State, where Article won. If you wanted to add Kwara, so Kwara is not central geopolitically, but Kwara is a Yoruba state. Kwara state has been maintained also strongly by uh, Tinubu. Bola Metinubu, where he got 263,000. And Article got 136,000. I just wanted to show you what happened there in 2019. Again, it was a strong APC state, so nothing has changed. In 2019, uh, APC's uh, Buhari got 308,000. PDP's Article got 138. Now, in 2023, uh, Bola Metinubu has held the state, but the figure has reduced from 308 to 263, possibly because of lower turnout. And Article has held the 136 he had. Now, so of the four southwestern states, Tinubu has maintained four. Uh, Obi has won one, Natu has won one. Now, he said something that I thought was interesting. He was talking about southeast. Mm. Before so, we go southeast, so it will be fair. It will not be fair then to say that the Yorubas have forsaken their. No, own. no, 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 they've not. He has, he has got a huge chunk. The, the main inquest, four the main, five the, out the, of yes, the main inquest for APC will be in Oshun State. How Article 1 Oshun State, maybe there are some local politics he will explain there. And nobody who understands Nigeria politics will be surprised that Obi won Lagos. Now, okay. the point about Lagos is that because Lagos is so big, if somebody had won Lagos by a massive percentage, it would have been big, like Great Accra. Yeah. But it's, Lagos is basically split down the middle 572, 582. Five. So it's just a 10,000 spread. Difference. So Lagos is big, okay. but it didn't do much for anybody. Okay. Now, Second, jump, jump to southeast now. Southeast, we have only one result confirmed from my, my, my tablet. And that result is his home state, Enugu Sorry, sorry, Enugu State, not the home okay, uh, Enugu, Enugu State. Not Anambra. A neighboring state to Anambra. He's from Anambra, Peter Obi. Mm -hmm. Now, look at this. This numbers, this numbers are fascinating, this guy. So, um, Peter Obi gets 429,640. Mm -hmm. 429,640. Mm -hmm. The second person is Atiku, 15,749. Wow, that's, that's... Tinubu has 4,772. Now, think, I mean, Rabiu has 1,800. So Peter Obi gets 429,000. Okay, Atiku gets 15,000. So if you even... <laughs> so if, if you add Atiku to Bula Tinubu, it's 20, less than 20,000. Obi has 428. So the spread, so plus 400,000. 408,000. So this is the point people are making, and my, this is one of my predictions. Peter Obi could actually win the popular vote in the sense that the, the margins in the north are mitigated for both parties. So even if Atiku wins any seat in the north, APC does well there. If BAT wins southwest, PDP it's does well mm -hmm. there, or Obi does mm -hmm. well there. But when Obi wins, and if Enu Go is anything to go by. If the kind of numbers we are seeing, this is like coming from the other K2 Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have yeah. you have 428,640. Former Bantama. The next person has 15,000. No. The next person has 4,000. The next person no has 1,008. That's a no contest. So, which is why you need to go back to the Nigerian constitution and how elections are won. Because if it was just a question of absolute votes, what Peter Obi is done in Enugu, and I think to be worse in Anambra, right? Yeah, because that's where he's that's from. Home. Yeah. I think Abia, Imo, and Ibonyi will give him the same. The other point we need to take notice, as the results come in, take note of South South. Again, he makes a point which I think is an important point. As I said to you, South South has six states Bayelsa, Delta, Rivers, Akwaibom, Cross River, and then Edo State. The projection for for Aqua Ibom is actually that Atiku is going to win Aqua Ibom, which, mm -hmm. which is crazy. So, this for me, I'm, I'm not so sure you can say that Bola Metinu is going back to Aso Rock yet. It's too early. Yes, because Atiku he, he needs to explain. Let him explain to you how Ocean State went to PDP. Do you oh, have some local politics? Right, and then, but then he will, he will also counter and say, okay, yeah. let Atiku explain how. Uh, Bola Metinu won Jigawa State. Okay. Right? So it's like even, even. But what, what we are seeing here is that if the numbers that Peter Obi is getting in the southeast is anything to go by, if those numbers continue to the south, south, 
then both both uh, both Nobu uh, and his uh, article. article have to be concerned about their twenty five percent spread because Southeast is looking dangerously Peter Obi. So it's it's a mixed picture yet. I feel it's too early to to say that. And of course, he's talking by faith, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But are you talking you, by faith, or you no, are I really? Mean, I mean, I'm just telling you. I'm talking so about the, the Oshun no situation. No mind, the I'm Oshun situation. Oshun. What yeah. happened? You could you could see that we just had a governorship election a few months ago, yeah. And we lost to uh, PDP, which is a senator Adeliki. We had a problem. The the former governor of Benia, Raul Raul Farago, the current uh, minister of uh, interior, is having issue with the. The, the the former governor of uh, Osho, which is Oyebola, Oyetola. So his own group, they are working against the party. And that was how we lost. And I believe that they should have solved the problem so that it, that shouldn't have affected uh, mm. the presidential election. But very unfortunate. Uh, we need to, we have learned from that also. So, you know, politics, politics Nigerian politics now is competitive. And uh, this this election, President Mamadou Abari has done so well. He has meant us to know that there is a great future for our nation. What about the raw votes that Bernard talks about? So if what has happened in just uh, one state in North and uh, Southeast is anything to go by, and if that can be projected to reflect in other states, <laughs> then the OB obedience, the obedience... 428,640. I've, I've not been noticing this situation for some months, but about... Uh, Four or five days ago, I started having calls from Ghanaians. How will be? Who be? I said, do you people understand our politics and, and democracy? Because the first thing you need to look at is our electoral law that stated that you got to need to have 25% vote from 24 states mm -hmm. and Vedra Capital Territory, Abuja. At least, at 24, at least from the 24. So let's look at it. You, 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 need to, to, you need to do your calculation about how OB is going to get 24. Because before you talk, talk about majority vote, you need to focus on 25%. But let, let's, count the, let's count the states. Okay, let, let's, let's just do a back of the envelope calculation. Mm -hmm. So you have um, in the southeast, there are five states, which we assume he would win. He will, he will get it. There, will are, get, there are six. Don't, don't, let, don't let us look at what they win. I want, I want yeah, you to get about I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to calculate your 25% yeah. in the 24 states. In 24 states. Okay. So, I want so he will obviously struggle in the seven states in the northwest. No doubt. So I don't think he'll get that way. So you can say the northwest is out. He's not going to get... Is he likely to win any seat in the northwest? I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a calculation for you. Mm -hmm. In the northwest, he won't get anything. Kasina, Kano, Sokoto, Jigawa, Kaduna, Zanfara. Why, so, why, 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 why can't you do that? We have got uh, six. Uh, we uh, have got uh, five from southeast. So okay, so I should do for, okay, okay, five. Okay, five. So he will get his five from southeast. In the south south, he will he'll get, get six. he'll get six. So, so that's eleven. Now the key point is then. Win or no, no. You see, he's supposed to no, get twenty five. He's supposed We're to get twenty five. He needs twenty five. He needs to get twenty five percent of his vote from at least 24 states yeah. so he needs 24 states where he meets the 25 percent threshold yeah. so he'll meet it in the five in the five states in the southeast mm -hmm. he'll meet it in the six, six in states south, in the south south so that whole zone he's taking it so in le he's may 11 now go to north central north central is very weird north central is a mixed bag quara state now look at quara state quara state is in in between the north west and the southwest he got thirty one thousand. Where Bola Metinugu gets 263,000, Atiu gets 136,000. So it's quite very low numbers in Kwara. Now, but Kogi State is not in. Benue State is not in. Plateau State, I expect him to win Benue and Plateau State. He will, he will get 25% in Benue and Plateau. Wonderful. So, so you add that so to his 13, 11, 13. 12, 13. 13. Yeah. Now, Kogi State, he could. Kogi State is local. It's a mixed bag. Kogi State. He won't, he, won't, he, won't, he won't get it. Kogi State is PDP and APC. Let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt it. I doubt okay. that. I don't, think, you, I don't think he'll get Niger State. But if you want to add it, you can Yeah, so let's it. assume we add the 11, Kogi. 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Let's add Kogi 14. 14. Let's even stretch it and say FTC. Mm -hmm. He takes right. 15. His problem is Nasarawa. You have, Nas not, you have not added Lagos. Lagos. So that okay, so 16. 16. Mm -hmm. So 16. Mm -hmm. He's still short about 8. Now, the state left in North Central, he needs to work his Nasarawa. I don't know if he's going to get. Because Nasarawa is... Um, is just next to Kaduna. North Central. North Central. North Central. North West, sorry. Yes. No, so Nasara is it's actually North Central. It's next to North Central, sorry. Yes. North South Central. of Kaduna. So we don't know if the spillover from Benue and Plateau, he will benefit something in Nasarawa. Is it Nasarawa 
it's like um, it's like BA. Okay, in the Afro region. Okay. Nassau is a transition zone. Mm, mm, so mm. in fact, the only reason why I have a lot of conflicts in Joss area is where it's like a mixed bag, okay? Where you have Christians from the south, Muslims from the south. north. It's a mixed bag. Mm. So let's let's assume his prayers and then get something in Nassau. Yeah, his yeah. problem now is that Bono, Yobe, Gombe, Bauchi, Jigawa, Kano, Katsina, Kaduna, Zamfara, Sokoto, Kebi. He's not going to get that. Okay. So, so you... his main prayer is to is to push the south west. Which he's not getting. So so far you've given him about he has like 16, 15, 16, 16. and he needs twenty four. So so he, he if he had so this is the point if he had if he had made better numbers in the southwest, then he would have been so a lot of so this is my feeling. He and he's right. He and um, Atiku have shot themselves in the foot because Atiku is doing well in the north. Obi is doing well in the southeast. So, if you put together those who oppose Bola Metinubu, they are probably more than those who want him to win. But because they are not on the same side, then they will create a way for him to go through. Because Let, how, he's the how, only, so it's almost like he's the only national character. How, how about now. we do what you just did for Obi for Atiku? Let's see. Well, let's do for Atiku. Ati, at, <laughs> so Atiku could push a runoff mm. because Atiku will get Bono, Yobe, Gombe. So, at, okay, let's make it easy. Okay. The states in the north, um, the north. East or the north north east. Why, why, is, why are you saying you're going to push for Iran? No, we are talking about 25. We are talking about 25. But Tinubu and Atiku will get 25% in 24. Yes. That, that, that's so, but then the numbers then come in, right? When, when you get 25% from 24 states, then you've won. So, you, you've you've won. Won. so you, no... you need to get the majority vote. One of, yes. the pressure One of them must get the majority vote. vote. Yes. If, no, no, if both of them got 25% in mm -hmm. 24 votes and OB got the majority vote, there will be a runoff. Mm -hmm. Because both of them had not gotten uh, majority vote, so one of them was one of them. That so, got so we are saying, as soon as either Atiku or Bola gets the two conditions, he's won the election. That, that, so that's, that's the point. The so as soon as, so if Atiku gets the majority votes and gets the twenty-five percent, so the only condition for a runoff is if Obi gets the majority votes. But does not get the twenty-five percent. So there's no point. And, and, but that's, but you don't be so sure. That's what I'm saying that. From the numbers I just saw in Enugu. Bernard, are you, are you obedient? No, I'm just saying. Why, no, why are you asking me not? No, why are you telling me not to do this? I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying, you, let's, just, uh, let's educate uh, the public properly before we go. I'm saying that this is the understanding. Mm. If you, you, to win an election in Nigeria, you, win, you need to win the majority of the votes, yep. and then you need to win at least 25% in at least 24 of the states plus FCT. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take Peter Obi. If the numbers he's getting in the southeast continue in the south, south he could win the majority of the votes because the gap between the, the leading two candidates is very small so they are canceling each other out do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. but then his spread in the southeast and south south could be big enough to win in the popular vote but not get the second condition if either of atiku or and you can correct me if i'm wrong if either of atiku or bola metinubu wins the majority of the votes they won the election because both of them have at least 26 states that they are doing so well. Okay. So the only condition for a runoff in this scenario I've printed is if Peter Obi continues to give the gaps he's given in the yeah. southeast and the south-south and wins the popular vote, but, but still all doesn't get the 25. Yeah. All the votes from southeast are 10 million or 11 no, million. No, bless you. So even know, that, no, because no, he has the 400,000. Sandra, no. Sandra, no. See, mm -hmm. just take our time. Mm -hmm. I give you, they are, they are Six geopolitical. So you add the south south to south east. No, south south is fourteen point four million. Mm -hmm. South east is ten point nine million. Eleven yeah. North central is fifteen point four million. That's okay. still a lot. Okay, okay. And but, you predict that he will make gain roads in north yes. central, and so, that's what is going yeah, to happen. Yeah. So, so if, if north central is fifteen point four million votes, Bernard, do you know do you know that Tinubu is doing better than the Obi in in Baesa and Akwaibo? Oh, I, I, the results are coming in. We are only losing so, 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 yeah, but uh, I think we need to be very careful. I said if, if we are. So just answer based on that if, if is a hypothesis. Okay. If, I'm if, not saying if, he has won. If, if Obi wins, that's a big lesson for us. And for someone like, uh, like me... Can the I, country rally around him? 
Why not? Whosoever that becomes the president, we are going to support him with the policy. All what we care about is our country to work. We want somebody that wants to, that we put it there. And I think they have, um, Elijah Abubakar and Achiwad Bola Metinubu, they must have learned from this. Even if we be the knowing, they must have learned from And the APC and the PDP must have learned that. Yes, no, don't forget the third, that. The third, don't the, forget the that the Labour Party, had. which didn't have a base, is winning senatorial seats mm -hmm. in some of the... So, so yeah. of Nigeria is going to become a three-party yes, state. Yes, so with, even if he loses the election, what Obi would have done is to create a new political mm. eco ecosystem in Nigeria where you have probably about a third of the senators in the country being Labour Party senators, which is quite significant. But are we not the emphasizing sky. the party as opposed to the person? Because I believe that if, but for Obi, the person Obi, I'm not sure the Labour Party would have been the problem. No, but the point is that once the Labour Party is riding on Obi to get, you see, once you get into Senate, and you get one or two gubernatorial seats, you That's go to the party. So even though Obi is the guy driving it, mm -hmm. what he's done is that now the Labour Party people will now say, we have X number of parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. So when they have discussions, they will be brought to the table. Whereas in the past, it was just APC and PDP. That's so you fair. shouldn't discount the effect of having, as we speak, only mm -hmm. NDC, NDP, and Ghana's parliament. Mm -hmm. right. If, if Indom's party had 20 MPs, yeah, you don't think that change that political that's, landscape? Yeah, that's Sky, in 30 yeah. seconds, mm -hmm. the work... Ghanaians, okay. what should they learn from the woke Nigerians? Well, I think all of us have been expecting mm -hmm. that there would be the third force that would break the duopoly we have between the NDC and PP. So far, we've not seen that. Um, a number of young people have emerged over the last uh, few elections, but they didn't ultimately make it to the ballot. I think the time has come for Ghanaians to reassess themselves. And John Bahama, the former president, made a point that Christians should not shy away from politics. I believe there are brilliant young men out there who are over 40 years, who are doing well in business. This is the time for them to say that, look, let's test the waters. There are people out there who support that They may want to run independent. And I believe that where they sponsor enough independent candidates across the country, there will be serious mark made yeah. on Ghanaian politics. Thank you. The words of uh, Richard Alaska has covered Ghana's parliament more than many journalists. He's currently a lawyer and practicing also as a journalist as a secondary job. <laughs> Bernard Kokoavle, who's the City Breakfast Show, the point of view on City TV, general manager of City FM City TV. And you man, no, sir. Nah, sir. High sense super promo. I will show them all five years manufacturer defect warrant. You name a border from Chendia Kenina. A church in the Akenina. High Sense, F Fetch 8 February, a coffee 8 March. A year High Sense Super Promo. I passed by your favorite. Bus. I think it's happening here. It's the usual bureaucratic, good, and decent about this hospital. I, 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 I just lost for words. Thank you for rescuing me from that accident. <laughs> This is um, this picture is talking about uh, Chebi. This is our intake at Chebi. It also depends on the Bering River. Next slide. Then this is uh, Bering at Bunsuk. 